in regards to you, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, your gaming as a whole? Because you are a gamer. A lot of people yeah. have had questions about you and the kind of games you like and the things that you do in gaming. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, I like Overwatch. Um... Do you have a particular game this year that you think you're looking forward to more than like everything else? Is there a hype game you really want in 2018? You know what I mean? See you later. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get it started. Let's get it started and play some music. I was looking up some Cyrax songs because I wanted to do my research, but the, the dude is just like, he's all, he's so good that it goes like full on horseshoe theory into being terrible. Uh, let's just give you a sneak peek, I guess. Lethal Weapon by Cyrax. And this is his avatar. <laughs> I don't know who made this. It's definitely not him. Because uh, his talent is music, not, not graphic design. Or anything else. Or music. Fuck yeah, get him, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, imagine if he was singing in English, that would be so fucking good, man, if he was actually in English, uh, let's go check out the, the Twitter machine, because uh, so many things have been happening on Twitter, not with DSP, but Twitter is falling apart, because uh, Elon Bust is uh, busting, uh, so let's, Let's open up a new tab and let's see everything blow up in my face because it's not going to work. Oh, yeah, it worked. All right. Busting. Uh, but let's check out the guy DSP because he was posting at like 2 a.m. his time last night and then he woke up extra early to be a hater today. The hate on journalists for actually no reason. It was very funny. So it's a they call me DSP segment. Or if you're a troll, you just put spaces in between of those words. So you troll him somehow. I don't know. All right, let's uh, ha, ha, ha. let's check this out. All right, so this is this is the iconic tweet, I guess. It's not iconic at all. It's it's a trash DSP tweet of basically st stating the obvious. And you know how much he loves doing that because that's one of the more DSP things ever is him just stating the obvious. So this tweet states, at this point, anyone changing their names to impersonate Elon Musk is purposefully doing it in the hopes that they'll get suspended so they can get attention for themselves and be pertinent, pertinent in a much bigger convo than they deserve to be in, whether it breaks Twitter TOS or not. We're getting the janitor right here, talking about Twitter fucking TOS. As if anyone in life cares about Twitter TOS. That is made out of paper mache. And uh, yeah, he uh, he left the replies open because DSP is, is not the guy who would uh, post stuff for attention. But he left the replies open because he did. So let's read some of them. I actually just noticed that they were they were open and he got almost as many replies as likes. Because he's great. Now let's see, uh, the first one is from the bad guy that says, so are you going to pay the $8 a month to keep your check mark? And the reply to that one is, I feel like content creators don't have much of a choice. If they want to be seen, they got to pay or else they're basically shadow banned and at, or at the bottom of the feeds. Oh, sad life. Poor content creators. And there are great tweets about other people doing stuff for attention. And then we're going to get to the other tweet. The tweet about the game journalist is much juicier. Uh, big ups, Jay Ruiz, for nine months uh, membership, dude. Welcome. Again. Uh, <laughs> dude, what a great insight. You know one thing of two about getting attention. 
after all. That's fantastic. You posted this at 2 a.m. Aren't you super duper busy? Can't make the time to film Patreon videos or update games or set up the following day stream? Busy, busy, busy. No free time. 2 a.m., dude. He was, uh, he was cruising for a boozing at 2 a.m. You're tweeting this to get a 10? Never mind. Uh, then we get, considering you opened up your replies to this tweet, it's pretty clear you're just tweeting out, uh, uh, tweeting out your point to gain attention from the Elon bros and increase engagement in general since you seemingly gain from negative PR. Uh, this is basically a, a, a very correct style take. And, and then we got this, uh, this gif that is great. How was I even muted? How long was I muted for? How did I even mute myself? I was, it was probably when I pressed the fucking escape button. Jesus Christ. Okay, anyways, I forgot what I said uh, when I was muted. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, this shit sucks. Anyways, uh, I don't think he was tweeting this to get a response from Elon Musk. But uh, I'm confused why, because it was just stating the obvious. Anyone with half of a brain cell, basically on the level of like cat, could log into Twitter and see that this is exactly what's going on. When you press on the first trending hashtag, you get to see exactly what's going on. And uh, what is this tweet if not for attention? You're so desperate for a viral tweet. You left replies on. That was very funny. Yeah, he he left replies on. I didn't notice all day because I didn't actually watch this tweet. I, I saw it on the Discord bot that reposted it. So it was pretty interesting that he left the replies on. And we get a fat cat pic. So congrats. And then we get this <laughs> great gif of a horse dragging a pig. Very nice. So this is for this tweet, and there's another one that is hot and is super toxic for no reason. And I think it's super toxic for no reason because now that I saw that he left the replies on, it kind of makes sense why he would be toxic out of his way. He would go out of his way to be toxic. So let's see this one. I am genuinely excited to be playing more Gotham Knights with you all on the stream today. I guess I must be crazy or something since every reviewer seems to dump on the game. Then again, I'm actually playing it at length instead of rushing reviewing it for clickbait. Bleh. Yeah, so fucking big of DSP. He put the pathetic little LOL in the end. And this one doesn't have the replies unlocked because it's not attention whoring. It's just, it's, just, uh, it's just drama baiting. It's just drama baiting. And you know, we're going to see both of these segments on today's pre-stream. It's going to be the first segment. It's going to be about the Elon bust. And then we're going to see the segment about the Gotham fucking Knights, a game that people already kind of seemingly forgot about. And now the, the new game is getting banned off of Twitter. That's the new game. You impersonate Elon Musk, and then you make a joke about him. Hey, big ups for the five gifted members. Uh, wait, who did this? Uh, Wicked Tools, big ups, dude. And people that got them, enjoy and be grateful. Throw up some prayer hands. Now let's uh, focus on spending some time doing something else before the guy starts busting on his own stream. And I don't know, uh, not any Cyrax stuff, because Cyrax shit is depressing. So let's check out maybe DSP pulled some shit last night, but I don't think so. Because basically nothing really happened. Uh, he got a lot of money. I think Team Ico Gamer wailed out massively. He gave him like a hundred bucks, so the first stream was boring as shit. Because obviously DSP got exactly what he asked for. And the second stream was, I, I don't know, Disney, Dreamlight, fucking Valley or something? I don't know. I don't know. Boring stuff. 
Uh, <laughs> wait, uh, I think... What happened to the Dark Surfer? He hasn't made any videos in a long time. And he made some, uh, some fun videos. Let's check out some fun classic videos. From the Dark Style Surfer. You can block the trolls. This was when he first started playing multiverses. This like three months ago. And when he exposed his champions on the phone. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, what do we got here? Real talk straight up honestly. Hey, big ups for the five gifted memberships. Silver Cyborg. Big ups, dude. Be grateful, people. In chat, express gratitude through emojis in chat. Uh, let's see what we got. DSP. Real, real talk, straight up, honestly. I wonder what this is for. Uh, is is it just a supercut? Is it a supercut of just like real talk or honestly? Somebody did a a supercut of him saying no, no, really. That one was great. That one was was like 15 minutes or something of him just saying no, really. No, really. Hashtag the Dark Surfer. Hashtag or, Dark I, Surfer, dude. I love what I do for a living. I love you guys that, that come to my streams every I love day. you guys. Who is we? Telling people on the internet you love them. That's a, that's a very interesting thing. He should tell the game journalists that you love them. Because you wouldn't support it if you didn't. For 14 years, I've done this. In a way very different. Tell me another person who does things the way that I do it, right? Nobody, because no it doesn't work. No shilling. No, no ads. Uh, the sponsorship is now gone. And so let's actually compare me. <laughs> the sponsorship is now gone. That's a great fucking quote, man. I love that quote. I love that quote. Yeah, see you around, Wicked Tools. Have a nice time at work. I'm already done, so I'm going to sip some beer and, and watch this disaster of a podcast. And then I'm going to go chill and do something else. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we had the great quote. The sponsorship is now gone. This is from back in the day. I don't know what, what it was. I think it was one of the chair sponsorships. It was like a 2017, 2018. Some nonsense like that. And also, um, who does things like me? Nobody, because that shit doesn't work. That's why you have to beg. Let that do that shit. When I don't, I literally am the one person who's not doing any of that shit, right? Yeah, somehow I still get- Tell me who else uh, burps and snorts for the camera. Nobody. He does it because he's real. He's the realest motherfucker on the planet. Held in comparison, it just it blows me away. Why, Phil? Why is it that you have to ask your viewers for support and help and and you know beg? Why do you beg? Oh, this is a video from like five months ago, and we're still talking about this to this day. This is five months ago, right? Maybe even more. Why do you beg, Phil? Why do you beg? On your streams, all right? Because I purposely. Oh, it's all on purpose. Made choices so that I can not only be true to myself and my own moral code. What? <laughs> <laughs> he begs because he's a moral guy. I forgot this segment, man. This is a hot segment. He begs because he's a moral guy. Because it's according to his moral code. I need to ask children on the internet for tips. Because I can't take a sponsorship because I'm too toxic. <laughs> but that... When you tune into any piece of content that I make, you know that this is Phil talking to you in an honest manner. Honest. Being transparent. When transparent. I the matter or the bottom line. Is, oh, this is great. This is great. Is we need Dark Surfer back, man. Go, go to his channel and ask him to come back. I don't know what happened to him. He made some hot videos. Or very underrated videos. To be honest with you right now, what I'm doing is trying to emphasize that what I'm about to say has weight or importance. Okay. Oh, I thought about a game or thought about anything. So yeah, that was one of the great revelations during the Rambo and Howard debunk was that when he says, I'm going to be honest, it actually doesn't mean that he's going to be honest. It means that he's going to be serious. I've actively tried to keep myself away from anything that would make me commercial, that would make me a shill, that would make me a sellout, or that would make me all about content at the expense of others and i think that's really what, how i could and now we do reacts by the way now we do reacts and we do the keemstar react and the wings of redemption react and he decided to be the the permission guy for the wings react and he had to ask him he had to ask sir wings for permission but he didn't ask sir keemstar for permission no permission from sir keem 
really summarize this. Because he doesn't like Keemstar, but he's an ethical and moral guy. Content at the expense of others. If you're someone who's a constant advertisement... No content at the expense of others. But he monetized his friends again and debunked their video for like six hours, eight hours straight. I still haven't finished that shit. We might go back and watch it someday. But I just can't stomach it. That shit is just too obnoxious. It's so annoying. You're... you're you're using other people's time. Best way to contribute what? would be to tip me. The tips I'm raising right now, real talk, straight up honesty. <laughs> real talk, straight up honesty. That's a combo. Are paying for my day off on Wednesday. Great. Trees, things for Jasper Kitty, other things that are needed around the house. And of course, uh, uh, you know, a meal with my wife once a week that we get to do that, okay? They eat only once a week. That's great. I have plenty. They only have a <laughs> one meal a week. This is, uh, yeah of money so why not spend it right so uh -huh. and she used to rock that the uh, that badass eye makeup back in the day as well the house it's a cat signature thing of course uh, uh you know a meal with my wife once a week that we get to do that okay i have plenty god damn <laughs> look at why this not spend it, right? why not so... spend it <laughs> it sure would be great if you like my content if you would tip me tonight at the expense of others you're making a living this was most probably an unrecorded segment as well because he was sitting at the menu as you can see, he's not playing a game. He was uh, out of the game. I have plenty of money, so why not spend it, right? So, I don't know, Cat. Why not? It sure would be great if you like my content, if you would tip me tonight. At the expense of others, you're making a living. If you're someone who just makes drama content, you're making a living on the expense of others. I don't want to do that. I want to make my own content, okay? And feel good about it. And that's why I, I don't want to ever involve myself in we know shit. he watches so the content just for that's fun why you guys should put fake sponsorships in your videos let him rant for an hour how Nordor raid is giving detractors money you know that that's a good idea I don't know if this is uh, allowed because if if like shadow legends or somebody catches wind that we do fake sponsorships like that I don't know I don't know probably probably nothing's gonna happen we could definitely do that uh we could do the the not the raid shadow legends but the the raid spray against insects and make like a little ad segment about uh how you can kill cockroaches and pig roaches with raid that's a that's, that's a great idea and also i i hit up on twitter one night i got drunk and i hit up uh, some gin companies that would uh, that are based in the uk so maybe they would send like a a bottle to uh, sam or to steve and then we could advertise it, but they, they ghosted me, dude. They were like the Burger King guys. They never came back to me. So I wish they did. I'm not even going to say their name. I think I, I actually said it in the past, but I'm not going to say it. Because it's like, a, a, I don't want to give them promotion. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. So I wanted to get some like meme sponsorship like that from some fucking company that nobody cares about, nobody knows about. But that relates to the, the things that we make fun of. And we would have some fun segment on the podcast where, where we would have jokes about it and we would chill it. Maybe even we could come up with like an advertisement or something. I get myself in these situations right now. All right. Yesterday was a really slow day for me on stream. I didn't make a lot of, of, of support yesterday. Just being honest. I didn't. Okay. It was a very slow day. All right, today, I'd like to make up for that. Will I? I don't know. I don't control it. It's you guys. <laughs> the way the mood changes. Here, the cat supplies. Bless you, sir. Oh, thanks, dude. The litter box is getting all uh, all disgusting. I need to change it. This is going to help a lot for me to change the litter box. Big ups. And, and big ups for the gifted membership. Whoever picks that up is a legend. And, you know, how much... You got to fight for it, guys. Oh, it's Darkseed the Phil. He picked it up. Big ups liking the content i'm doing in a given day how much you can afford to support that content giant whale that's cool there's a giant whale I that's the model that i operate that's the model i like it when when he talks about his uh oh yeah now we're gonna get into the begging model that is a great clip uh, i love when he talks about what he does as a business with this terrible layout and this terrible camera quality and this terrible background and wearing a t-shirt that looks like he's been wearing it for like 20 years straight and looking like trash like some some like alcoholic j that just rolled out of bed yeah, yeah what a what a great fucking business man but let's let's get this whole clip again day how much you can afford to support that content giant whale that's cool there's a giant whale I that's the model that i operate on 
Can you argue it's a begging model? I I mean, I guess. Can you argue it's a begging model? I I mean, I guess. <laughs> Anyone? And we get the instant replay just because because we were like, wait, did he even say that? Yeah, he said that. It's like it's kind of mind blowing the stuff that he admits to sometimes. Well, yeah, I am a beggar. Yeah, I, I guess I'm proud to be a loser, and I guess I'm proud to be on level one because not even pignotizing himself is strong enough to block out actual reality that he's a beggar and he's on level one. Crowdfunded on the internet like I am. Not accepting donors, um, because I don't really want them now. You so that is something that I'm gonna do. Wait, what? Um, and I want to help. Uh, so for now, I'm just not really um keen on it. But we will be doing a charity stream or something in the future. But I think I've seen. Well, we'll help him. My life is my mother and my family first. Uh, I guess adheres to that model. And I'm in a situation where I don't have sponsors, I don't have things to advertise, I don't do that. I might have to sell my purposefully so that my content is different. My content is different. That's why. And you can yell at me. Oh, this guy is cool. Well, big ups then. Tear me down and say that I'm, big a, beggar, cool. I'm a loser and I'm on level one. Phil oh, I put this in a song. It's great. That's why it sounds familiar. I'm a beggar and I'm a loser and I'm on level one. Phil's a faggot. Phil's, Phil's fat. Phil's a loser. Phil's, Phil's a beggar. beggar. You can say whatever you want, man. Go ahead. Made me feel like shit. Like, and now we get the, the victim segment. When he embraces being a beggar, then we get a victim segment. Oh, you think it's so funny to make fun of me? Yeah, I am a fucking loser. You enjoy, like, making fun of me for being a fucking loser and begging? Do you like that? Do you like that? I'm already on a different yes. basis, right? Like, I can't... The fact that I can't go on a honeymoon with my wife, the fact that, I'm, I'm, you know, every week... Yeah, he, he goes on honeymoons with fucking Ricky Steamboat. And uh, who was the latest one? I forgot. But it was uh, Hulk Hogan and Ricky Steamboat. He goes on honeymoons with them. Basically, I'm, I'm paycheck to paycheck. Like, I don't already I'm feel paycheck like, to like, paycheck. Just, you know, go ahead and try to bring me down. You're such a big man. You're such a big man. Oh, yeah, Jim Neidhart. Yeah. And he does this weird, like, almost like a soy jack uh, meme kind of pose where he points at something and has, like, the, the mouth wide open. It's real, real hot. It's a great picture that they put in the game. It's it's not very flattering though. Twitter, right? You're a team star. You're just such a great, really powerful dude. Really, like you're so cool that you can just stomp on people under you and use them for your own personal gain. It's just a really awesome thing in life to do that, right? You have no respect. Oh yes, so I love that. Make a highlights video of the reacts he did. I couldn't believe he reconned best USSF2 player into no, I didn't mean it. I was trolling everyone, dude snort. Oh, of course, yeah. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I was just faking, flexing, and making this my whole claim to fame that I was the number one US ranked player. Dude. <laughs> Big ups, uh, Chris Dorner respecter for his super chat. But I don't know. There, there might be a, a super cut of, of those somewhere. There might be a highlights reel. For people that are alive, you have no respect. I love Howard in this. He was completely just unleashed, unchained, unhinged. He wasn't unhinged. He was unchained. And Rambo didn't know what to do with it. He couldn't just say, hey, Howard, stop. Because Loki, he was agreeing. You know he was agreeing. You're so cool that you can just stomp on people under you and use them for your own personal gain. It's just a really awesome thing in life to do that, right? You have no respect. For people that are alive, that for for fucking people that are dead, you don't give a shit about anybody but, but yourself. yourself. I can tell you, there's zero people who I've ever done that with. Zero. Zero people. Okay. Even when I was at the height of my YouTube popularity, I'm not gonna do that. All right. DSP, your um friend thinks that you should get a job. <laughs> oh yeah, big ups, uh, Goral. Big ups to the Goral. Now let's see some more Dark Surfer stuff before the actual Dark Surfer comes uh, surfing by on that big wave of positivity and toxicity. It's kind of a mixed bag of waves. Uh, every begging segment from Multiverses, let's see what, uh, what the unique ethical style content actually truly is all about. Ample opportunity to talk with you guys and give you shout outs for any contributions, so don't worry about that. Just please be a little patient because I can't do it immediately, like I might be able to do with another stream that's a little bit more laid back and relaxed. Okay, speaking of which, tonight, if you guys can support the stream, I would really appreciate it. I've now had two straight days of relatively slow stream support. Um, 
Last night, we only got like maybe 10, 15 bucks of tips. Today, we barely hit the $50 tips goal uh, on Batman. So things have really slowed down in the last few days, which sucks. Tomorrow's my day off. Tips are what pay for everything on my day off. Anything you tip me tonight helps me directly for my day off tomorrow. So if you can support the stream tonight, anything's appreciated. Thank you in advance for any kind of support. I really do appreciate those who support my content. But if you want to help the most, tipping would make sense since that, number one, gets you rewards. And number two will help me for my day off tomorrow, okay? Okay, let's get to the next one. This is uh, able to make this is what he prides himself on, having content like this. Because there's no ads, you guys. It's just all the ads are about me. I'm advertising my day off Maybe and that. needing money. At least when, when somebody make, makes a Raid Shadow Legends ad, they make it kind of interesting. Especially those big channels, like when they do a NordVPN, when Internet Historian does a NordVPN sponsorship, that segment is fun as hell. Last couple of slow days with some. And this is just miserable. And it's supposed to be a chill interactive stream. Good rewards tonight. Maybe get you there's a hat or something on the stream. Something silly, right? Something silly. It's one of those silly things we do. So, by the way, thank you, G Dizzy, so much for that ten dollar tip earlier. Like I said, tips have been very, very slow recently. I don't know why. It's weird. It doesn't seem. It just seems to be inconsistent. Sometimes I play a game, it's great, and then I play the same game, and then the, the support's slow, and I don't know. So thank yeah, you, dude. That's the biggest tip of the night earlier, and I appreciate that. Okay. It's almost as if the same pay pigs can't show every day and have money to give you every single day. All right, guys. Remember, if you're having a good time tonight, please remember to like the stream. This helps for engagement purposes. It's an easy way to to support the stream for free. If you particularly want to help the stream, uh, you know, please tip. Tips help me directly for my day off tomorrow, and tips this week have been very slow for the last two to three days, so it will be great to hit the hat goal tonight for and uh, and have a silly hat for you guys to vote on. A silly hat. Out of time. A silly hat and a silly vest. Last chance if anyone wants to support. Put him on his silly head. If you would in any way, whether it's a like, membership, gifted membership, super chat, super sticker, or tip, they're all appreciated. Thank you guys. Well, Slayer, I appreciate that, but again, I'm not anyone's dad, and you think you, I think people understand that. I'm not here to be anyone's role model. I'm not here to be anyone's freaking dad. I'm not here, you know, I'm just here to be a dude on the internet playing games. You know, having fun, chilling, being real. That's what it's all about, but it's not about anything past that. No one's talking to me anyway. Everyone's saying the dumbest shit, like, someone tagged, you like spiders. That's what people have to say to me tonight when I'm trying to play this game. You like spiders. Dude, it's just a normal question. Do you like spiders? Some of them are pretty cool. Do you like them? Yes or no? No, you're a fucking idiot. No one is talking to me. Kind of discussion, I guess. So. It's a stupid fucking low, low IQ discussion. Watch me play a shaggy, you fucking idiot. One more match, and then we'll call it a night. Yes, I want to say special thanks to G Dizzy. If it weren't for G Dizzy, this once again would have been one of the least supported streams I've ever done. I played this three times in the last week, and I really don't get much support for it. It seems like there's always one person who shows up, and there's a lot of support. Big ups, G Dizzy. The rest of the fucking scrubs that sent him, like, what, $20 in total? You guys are broke bitches. You guys don't mean anything. No. I don't know. Oh, this is so good, man. These fucking vintage begging segments. And now all we got is just uh, no begging DSP, where it's all implied begs. Oh, it would be nice if you guys give me money, but I'm not asking for it. Today is kind of slow, but, you know, I'm not asking for contributions. Want me to play this? Whoa, look, I just received a, uh, an anonymous $150 tip. A variety, they want me to play this. is something different. It's, pop it's actually the most popular fighting game ever right now. Um, I like it. I'm down for playing more. But I hope that people will support it, because if they don't, I can't keep playing it constantly. You know what I mean? So uh, I would hope that people will watch and support in the future. I'll try it again on the weekend and see what happens. But thank you, G Dizzy, at least, for the support tonight. I appreciate that. All right? All right. And this ended at the right time because the guy is about to start. So let's look up DSP Space Gaming so we don't give him a I don't know what. But I guess that's what the trolls do, and I'm a troll, so I'm going to do that because we're all a hive mind. We're all a groupthink mentality. Do you guys agree? You must. So let's see what Hot Song is going to play before his podcast begins. Oh no, he's straight up live. Oh no, he's not. Dark. He just he just messed up the uh, he messed up the layout, so he had to give you a clown face. Uh, what is this? Pepsi Man said something in chat. Okay, I'm ready to go. We'll start when this song ends. 
thanks. That's the kind of feedback I need. What is the kind of feedback he needs? What did the guy say? Ooh, that's an old comment. Who was he looking for? Oh, yeah, I think the short schedule is boring and repetitive. Would be a lot better if you just did a couple of highlights every week. This is the highlight. Uh, this is, by the way, the feedback he needs, quote unquote. Dude, people been telling you this and you call them idiots. People been telling you all the repetitive scheduling is bullshit. Why is the camera like this? And again, the camera is fucked up. We're having technical difficulties today. Uh, as you can tell, the camera is incredibly bad and I have to figure out why. Uh, if you're wondering what's going on. So my my computer crashed. Uh-oh. Morning. He needs a new okay. PC, you guys. Hint, it's hint. Good. It's not good that a computer would crash. Um, It went blue screen on me. Uh-oh. Okay. And when it went blue screen on me, basically a bunch of stuff stopped working. Oh, really? The USB uh -oh. port on the front of my computer on its case. So I had several different USB ports sitting on the front of the case of the, the PC. Alert, uh, alert. To the case itself. The PC saga is back, everybody. Bust out and the those credit cards. My, my wireless mouse and my wireless keyboard to do stuff on the PC. They just went, died. Okay? So I moved those adapters over to my USB hub. But now I think what's happening is it's draining too much power out of the hub, which is making this camera run in a worse mode. In the worst mode. What I can try to do right now, which I don't know if it'll work on the fly, is try to unplug stuff from the hub. Let's take a look here. Oh, we're getting another uh, help desk segment. We're getting the IT tech support segment. Can I, do this? I love this. You might think. Uh, oh, the, the fart sound that you say in chat was actually me opening up my beer. Because I drink from a bottle. I actually pour it, the bottle into a glass and then I drink from the glass. Okay, now he's gone. This is a podcast, by the way. Be entertained by this somehow. You're supposed to sit here and wait. USB port anyway that I don't need. And he's in his jammies again. Look at these hot jammies. Very nice, businessman. Mr. Business. <laughs> Mr. Business. <laughs> Mr. The Wolf of Wall Street. The Pig Roach of Wall Street. Oop, we're getting window sounds. Okay. So now... Okay, we're unplugging it. Let's see what's going to happen. It's going to freeze it. And it froze it. Here, Damn. Must be really cold up in there. Oh, of course not. It doesn't reach. Oh my god, it doesn't fucking reach. Shouldn't you do this before the stream starts? You know, you like check all your equipment. Kind of like a streamer does. No, he just turns on the the PC that is already on because he doesn't turn it off. It reach. And then he presses the start streaming button and starts jerking off. Or at least that's what he used to do. And then he got busted while he was busting. And he doesn't do that anymore. So my problem is that it won't reach. I need to get a USB extension cable, which I know I have. Because if you remember, when we were cleaning out my closet, we found some of them. But now I have to find them. Because they're in the closet. So hold on a second here. I might have to restart the whole setup, by the way. We'll have to see. Hey, and we're getting a restart Technical segment. Don't you love it? Yeah, you love it. Technical difficulties. That's what happened when you don't maintain your setup at all. <laughs> so somebody, please, please, buy him a new fucking PC or something so this shit gets to stop. So it can break in a half a year and we can do another one of those segments again. Yeah. Maybe he can put it on a payment plan again. We need a PC bill. You guys, you know, I need to pay, like, with all that fucked up shit that was happening to me, you know, my car, you know, my dishwasher, I have to, like, I have to pay the fucking TV, I have to pay the PC. Okay. So I'm opening my USB extension cable here. Alright. We're getting a... Hopefully this works. A voice description of what is happening. The Netflix audio description is on. Maybe even subtitles can be on. Pretty sure I don't need 16 feet, but that's how big this one is. You bought a 16 feet cable, though. USB extension cable, good lord. Yeah, why did you buy it that long? Damn, you can wrap cat around it. It's probably gonna be a little bit now too short, but this. still, you can try. You can try. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> He, he did some shit with the with the microphone. 
Now we get more noise. You're supposed to turn off the stream and do all this nonsense. Now you're gonna break everything. Oh, he's gonna go on Twitter and post about it. I'm sorry guys, but today we're having unforeseen erroneous technical difficulties, so I'm gonna be late for stream. Uh, I'm gonna keep you updated on the situation. The camera's plugged in. The problem is now the camera failed when I was streaming. So I'm wondering, how do I get the camera to refresh? And it may simply be, I have to restart OBS. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Let's see here. Webcam, properties. No, you can probably uh, restart it within OBS. Yeah, got it selected. Is there a refresh button or something for it? Maybe you can... Uh... Let it drink some beer. It's refreshing. Pour some beer on like it. Like no refresh for the camera. Well, it it so, refreshed though. I guess I have to try to try to restart OBS entirely to see if I can get this to work. It should technically, because now it's plugged in to the USB port that was already working fine, uh, and it's actually its own USB port. Which honestly, this webcam probably should have its own USB port, regardless, since it is streaming video. It's probably the highest amount of data use out of anything plugged into that hub um okay sure so i guess we're gonna do that if you're <laughs> live on stream it will not affect you but this is an on-demand video it's gonna be different so i'm just gonna stop recording if this is a fucking on-demand video you shouldn't be recording this this is not content don't upload this to the internet dumbass okay hold on if this is an on-demand video I stopped recording. What I'm going to do is turn off OBS. yeah you shouldn't be recording this in the first yeah, place it's broken okay, guys it's broken all right, so give me a second. I'm going to stop the stream, restart OBS, and hopefully it's working. Okay, All right. we're going to sit here and wait because it's an important stream. He's about to shit on game journalist and Elon Musk. So this is a very important stream. We need to wait for everything to be back online. Maybe he would want to do a, a complete do-over, and he wants to uh, maybe play the songs again for like 20 minutes just to make sure that everything's going to be like like it should be. Uh, uh, of course, even DSP is not going to do that. He's not a DSP enough to do this. <sighs> okay, now I'm plugging the USB into the data transfer center. And now the data should be transferring. And this is a, a very high quality data, so it should be a very nice picture and good graphics. In a very uh, high definition frame rate. And a good refresh resolution. <laughs> You guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about. This is like, like professional setup. It's not for fucking nudniks and fucking dunces. Bleh. But anyways, let's see how, uh, what's, what's going on in chat. What's going on in chat? This should be amazing. Uh, thanks, Joe Biden. Now DSP's computer doesn't even work. What's next? And DSP says, dot, 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 give me a sec. And then we got the Adpocalypse nominations. Let's check this out uh, while we're not doing anything and nothing is happening on the stream because it's being restarted. All right. Loading, loading, loading. Loading style content. Let's see what people are suggesting. The Tango Man advert from 1992. Back to school PSA. Check out this ad for the first iPod back in 2001. 1981 Chevrolet Caprice jingle commercial back when car companies used to do these and we get an advert was banned because because kids started slapping each other imitating it that's great DSP fans are gonna start slapping each other when they see it too so it, it probably shouldn't be playing ah <sighs> So we, we see all the rules. The video must be on YouTube so you can link it. Uh, it must be from the 80s, 90s, or the first half of the 2000s. Nothing post-2005 will be allowed. Because I guess that's going to get taken down. It can be an ad or a PSA, but no entire shows, movies, or content allowed. As they will definitely not be viewed as a transformative work. And he's definitely not going to sit through an entire show, movie, or content. Wait, what? No entire shows, movies, or content? Uh, no entire content, I guess. That's 
interesting. It can be both from the USA and outside of the USA. In fact, international ads are welcome because I've likely never seen those before. This is great. Uh, and by great, I mean terrible. Because this is an awful idea of a marathon. Because he's going to watch like, what, 15 ads that are like a minute long and then it's going to run out of steam and it's going to get boring. And we're going to do an impromptu Q&A. And by the way, th this is still what we get is a buffer and an empty chair. So a pretty dope, dope thing happening. Meanwhile, let's do some shout outs in chat. Somebody said they were new to the content. Big ups, uh, Mr. Pika fan for being new to the content. And you should probably stay away while, while it's still early, while you haven't been consumed from the content. Big ups to HEOs for being happy that I'm around. I'm happy I'm around too. I'm still kicking. And big ups chat for sitting through this for absolutely no reason. I, I don't even know why I'm sitting through this. I should probably restart, maybe refresh. Is he back? Maybe I, it's just me being a, a nude Nick in a dunce. But no, he's probably not back. Probably not back. And I wonder what happened to his... Uh... Uh, I wonder what happened to his PC. Why did it green screen? Okay, it's working. It was something very stupid. But this is good. Now it's on his own line and not being shared with anything else. Let's restart the show. LOL and see him bitch about game journalists and Elon Musk with his very basic watered-down takes on existence on this planet. But that's good. That's good, because that's honest content. That is, uh, that's honest, it's genuine, it's pure, it's raw, it's all the buzzwords. It's also chill and interactive. That's why we like him so much. All right. Come on, dude. You said you were going to restart this and we're still sitting here and no no restarting is happening. Oh, there we go. We're live. There we go. Is he going to play the intro again? He probably should because he's recording this, right? It has to be a real podcast. If he doesn't, it's probably not going to be real. I can't see. Oh, yeah. 71 views right now, I guess. Yeah, and he's playing the intro again. And chat is probably as hot as always since it's it's not moving at all. Whoa, it's uh it's a little bit more than usual. It's more than a page. Which I don't know how. But I'm not gonna start counting them. But yeah, you can see. From all those eight hundred and whatever members, he got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in chat, which is great. They're all showing up. They all love the content. Created by Phil Burnell. Cats downstairs trying to stack wooden blocks. Stop. <laughs> Cats downstairs on a treadmill trying to power up that PC. Phil here. That's why it's Welcome so slow. To Level 1 Podcast. We're big big of, down, uh, down here on Level 1. And, uh, hey on Doomer for you know, the Super apologies, Chat. Apologies, we had technical difficulties this morning, uh, which obviously I did not intend on having. Uh, it happens sometimes. It, which sucks, obviously. You don't want technical difficulties, but when they creep up, you got to deal with them as best you can, right? So we got a lot to talk about on today's podcast. Today is Monday, the 7th of no November, 2022. Um, and there's a ton of stuff going on. We got to talk about what's going on with my uh, short schedule YouTube shorts and what you guys think of them, because I want honest feedback if I should keep doing them or not. The early reviews for Sonic Frontiers are out. The game comes out tomorrow. I'm playing it. And obviously, I'm very excited to check it out. And the reviews are very mixed. I'd like to talk about those. We got a lot of crap going on on Twitter right now with censorship and a lot of people jumping on a bandwagon. So I'd like to talk about that today. We got a lot of topics to discuss. All right. But before we get to all those topics, let's talk about what just happened. Uh, to more technical difficulties. As if I haven't had enough recently. And now he's going to tell you exactly what the problem was. My TV dying. Right. This morning. The king of I suffering, by the way. Morning. And all of a sudden, I go to turn on my second monitor because I have two monitors, all right? Primarily, the reason I have two monitors is because I used to do 
like a video editing and stuff, you know, years ago uh, on other channels on YouTube like KO Gaming. I haven't done that in a long time. Do I absolutely need two monitors? No. Is it useful? Absolutely. Yes, it is for the kind of work that I do still. I still make use of them. Uh, so the monitor turned on really slow, then turned off. And I had to cycle through the video feeds to get it to turn on again. I'm like, what is going on here? Is the monitor dying? Then all of a sudden, boom, blue screen of death. Oh, no. Computer says, graphics driver. Restart. Let's just compile Died. a message and then restart. I was like, that's not good. What did the error message say? I can't remember the last time. I you can look it up to figure out what it means. So I restarted the computer and, you know, boots up to the Windows screen where you got to log in and everything. And Phil should rename worked. this to the tutorial podcast won't. because he orders around his pay pigs and whales on what to do. Yeah, but at the same time, they can't actually do anything in his vicinity. They can only actually just send him money. <laughs> so when, when it comes to actually doing something, he's completely helpless. Move. It's not even like... Uh, it goes for a Super Chat, dude. My Mr. Pika fan. Nothing. And I'm thinking to myself... <clears throat> the well, tutorial style podcast. It's not the whole PC not working because obviously the monitor's on. Okay. <clears throat> you know, every, Good. things are working here. So I'm thinking, where where are these peripherals plugged in? Well... On my PC case, there are what they consider shortcut USBs on the front. There's four of them, and then there's actually a headphone jack and a microphone jack, you know, the old stereo cable type, on the front of my PC case. Now, years ago, I used those for various different things. I haven't used those in a long time <clears throat> when, I'm, when it comes to the audio jacks. But I remember a year or two ago, for some reason, I had to do something on my PC. I can't remember what it was. And I tried to plug headphones in, and it don't work anymore. Those headphone jacks died for some reason. They just don't work. So what it seems like now has happened is this morning, my USB ports um, on the front have fried. They don't work anymore. Oh, no. That's where my Buy a new PC now. In. Now. And so I unplugged them, plugged them into other USB things that I have, <clears throat> and they worked easily. No problems. Okay? So obviously that was the problem. Um, the USBs must have died after many, many, many years of use. Uh, keep in mind, this computer is over eight years old, so not shocking that these kind of things are going to start to happen uh, over time. Quite <laughs> hint, frankly. hint, hint, hint. You know, I think it's something that commonly will starts happen starts dying over commonly. Time. Um, you know, when it comes to a PC that's used daily, like mine, um, and the fact that the, the, the headphone jack had already broken uh, probably, you know, makes sense that the USBs were going to go too. So here's the thing. On my PC, I have many USB ports. I probably have like six in the Dude, back. okay, okay, okay. Wasn't the point of fixing the technical difficulties just so we can proceed with the show and not just keep dwelling on it endlessly? We don't care what was wrong with the PC. You fixed it. Let's get on with a stupid podcast now. And I actually have a USB hub that I've used for various things over the years. Because, you know, I have a lot of peripherals. Just think about what's plugged into my computer right now. This microphone is plugged into this receiver unit. Yo, this is, is terrible. USB port. This camera is a USB. Um, my wireless keyboard, my wireless mouse, <clears throat> my printer, all right, and my capture device. So that's six right there. Now, uh, other times I've had other things like an external hard drive and things like that plugged in as well. So basically at any given time, this thing has like seven, eight USB ports being used. And that's why I needed the hub to kind of plug a few of the lower energy use things into that. So that I'm not uh, overdoing it or, or, you know, using all the plugs. So, basically, I've had no problems with this thing for a long time in regards to the ports or anything. Um, this is the first time I've had a problem in many years. Uh, so, all I did is I unplugged the keyboard and mouse from those front USB things on the case that apparently don't work anymore. I plugged them into the hub. Boom, it works fine. All right? Maybe just his drivers are corrupted or something. I don't know. Maybe his bios or something. Who fucking knows, man? Shit just breaks with him constantly, and he just makes up a reason why. So, yeah, dude, it's fucking fried. I need to buy a new one. So, cool. Let's get the stream started. Yeah. Let's get the stream started. All of a sudden, my webcam is choppy as hell. Now, this is my fault because I forgot that when I got this webcam a little over a month ago, and shout out to the fan who donated it because, man, has there been an improvement in visual quality. Oh, yeah. Massive improvement. As, as the color changes constantly. And the, the sharpness makes it look like I'm watching like a, a Saw movie. It's so grimy and dirty and disgusting. Yeah, right? I mean, people really appreciate that. Um, I forgot that this webcam has an auto feature called low light adjustment, which is stupid. YTF, what is does Phil have a printer? Is he printing out MapQuest? 
He's printing out his bills, I guess. Just the uh, endless lists of bills. It's like in The Shining when Jack Torrance was just writing, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And it's just like with Phil, the same thing. He just types it out all day. All bills and no chill make Phil a dull boy. And it just keeps printing them, keeps printing them, printing them. Software based and it completely destroys the frame rate of the camera. So the camera is stupid. Right now. Because they put a low light mode or some nonsense. You're seeing, you know, a smooth 30 frames. The camera, by the way, is supposed to be 60 frames and it's not. Same thing with my old Logitech camera. For some reason, they only run at 30, even though they promise 60. I don't understand that. Um, I have it set for 60, but it doesn't work at all. Like, I have it set 60 frames. Where is it? Uh -huh. Okay, you don't need it to be 60. Yeah, Come on. Highest FPS possible setting, and it only runs at 30, even though it says it's a 60-frame camera. Well, you got scammed. I don't know. <laughs> you got scammed way. again. Um, this dude always gets scammed. Even when he gets stuff for free, it's always not as good as advertised. Or it is good at, at first, and then it turns out to be trash and stupid. So... Uh, this is Auto fucking Odyssey stupid. ...using this low-level la balance adjustment software feature, which I didn't realize. So I started doing the show, and it looked choppy as shit, and everyone's like, oh shit, this isn't working. And I thought, oh, maybe it's because my camera now is being shared on that USB hub with other things. Maybe I should plug it directly into the back of my PC. But then the wire wouldn't reach, so I had to dig into my closet and pull out a USB extension cable. And so basically, the stream's like 15, 20 minutes late. Okay, and we got to make it extra late by rambling about exactly what happened for another 15, 20 minutes, right? Because this makes sense instead of just getting on with it and getting over the bullshit that just happened. By now, he would have been a good tear into the show, and I ended up starting. Yeah, no, he would, he would be just stretching and touching his face and talking about uh, what day of the week it is and, and what he's going to play next Monday. You do. Technical difficulties, right? The good news is it wasn't anything. And he's going to be repeating himself from yesterday when he told you, oh, yeah, God of War, it's great, man. But I know a lot of you are not going to show up at first because you're going to be playing the game, too. And that's perfectly OK. Serious. I don't care about the few USB ports on the front of my PC case not working. I don't need them. Um, and quite frankly, when a PC starts to have things go wrong, it's usually those little bell whistle extensions on the front of a case that go go first. I know from experience when I used to build PCs, even you know on some of those PCs, some of the things right in the front of the case wouldn't work within a few months. Like what happened? They're just you know it's not great made stuff. You know it, it, the stuff on the back of the PC. That's durable and supposed to last a long time. The stuff on the front of the PC is junk, really. Okay? All right. Sure. That so that, anyway, that makes no um, sense. Sorry for the late start. <laughs> it's all on the fucking motherboard, DSP. Sorry for the what? Like, does, does that even make any sense? Difficulties. Bruh. Hope there's no more today. I did test... Hey, what's up, Joker? Video Welcome. Video, and uh, it seems to be working. What? Why are we switched there to this? Go. Behind me here. Let's make sure, right? And again, his yep. frame and his camera, it's not, it's not aligned, it's not grouped. What a professional. So that's good. All right. Fantastic. Camera's now working. My cat is working. His cat is working. See? Probably more than his wife and him combined. <laughs> yeah. it seems to be working. Sorry for the delay. But now let's actually get, get started here with the show. What do you think, Jasper? Should we get started with the show? What's your opinion on this? Hmm? Jasper Kitty. Jasper Kitty. Say something for the audience. They like to hear you talk. Would you like to say something? They like to hear you he talk. When is because he never meows. Jasper he Kitty talked. He meows in the hallway. He meows in the bedroom. He walks up and just says meow meow meow. In the meow meow meow. Conversation with. Hey, big ups for the membership. You uh, forever bald. Clam up, Jasper. Why do you clam up when you're in here? Big ups. Hmm. Jasper Kitty. Jasper Kitty, say something. Jasper Kitty. He won't talk. Come on, dude. And now we have to meander with this stupid cat and trying to make him say something. What is he going to say? Tip me? What is he going to say? I am being abused? What is he going to fucking say? He never says anything. He's the blandest cat in life. Who he'll, he'll put on a top hat and a suit and do the song and dance. Hello, my yes. Dad, hello, honey. Hello, my red Yes. Hell. He'll do it only for you, one person, but then as soon when the camera's on or when someone's watching, he just clams up like a normal frog. That's exactly what Jasper. He's a, the most talkative cat on the planet until I say, hey, Jasper, want to say something to the audience? And he's like, nope, I'm clamming up. <laughs> Hilarious. There you go. Uh, so this was a joke, by the way. This is how DSP does jokes. Right. There he goes. Let's talk. What are we going to talk about today? Man, we got a lot to talk about today. Where do we even start? Um, Because there's a ton to discuss. We got a lot of interesting things happening in the world of gaming, the world of, of social media, um, and just in my content alone. 
So all right, here's where we'll start. I got an email this morning. Oh, no. Actually, not an email. I take that back. I opened the YouTube app, YouTube Studio app, which is how content creators like me track our content, approve comments, and do all kinds of functionality things without having to be at a PC. I opened it up, and I got a pop-up from YouTube. YouTube says, starting in early February 2023, they are going to fully monetize YouTube shorts just like they fully monetize regular videos on YouTube. Yeah, that's not going to work out the way he thinks. Why are you staring at me? It's not going to work out the way he thinks. It's going to happen. He, he ain't going to make shit from that. He's going to spam them until they make 50 views each. And nobody's going to care. Why are you staring at me? What's going on? Oh, look at this. He's rubbing my face. Wow, hilarious. How about we keep going? Let's try this again. In, in January, what they're going to do is amend everyone's partner contracts. So if you're interested in monetizing YouTube shorts... You got to sign a new contract that just says, you know, okay, now a contract. Do we're going to pay you yada, yada, yada. A yada. contract. No Everyone's kidding. partner contracts. I have a contract with YouTube, you guys. That's how I can get memberships. I signed a contract. It was like uh, in the NBA. I made a big, like, interview, and I said, I'm taking my talents to YouTube headquarters. And I, they gave me a big contract. They shook hands with, uh, with Susan. She said, I, I'm one of the brightest talents on the platform. They haven't even said what the contract is yet, so you don't even know. A contract. Um, you don't even know like what it's going to be. Will it be the same exact revenue share that they offer on ads for regular videos, or is it different for the YouTube Shorts? Is there an incentive to make shorts? They haven't really explained yet. I guess what they're saying is, in January, get ready because in January we're going to hit you with the new information. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk about this until January. Congratulations. Thing. The last couple of months. Big ups I for the sub, uh, Mr. Pika content. fan. How do I use shorts? Two ways. Two ways. Way number one is a daily schedule that I call the short schedule. Terrible. Every day. When Worthless. The day, Worthless. He repeats his schedule like six times a day in three separate videos. I just open And a YouTube short and on Twitter. And sometimes on the community tab. I don't know if he's still doing that. And if he does that, that's just, that's just I don't know. It's a disaster. I open my phone for one minute and I tell you what's going on and what's going to be coming the next day. Okay. Right. And the, the way he makes it sound like so quick and easy and streamlined. Dude, you repeat your schedule every 30 seconds. The reason I started doing this is because I used to do something called the audio only schedule on Twitter. All right. And people really liked it because that was very good for uh, people who were sight impaired. Oh, yeah. Listen to Literally it. one guy. Literally one guy. And know what I'm doing the next day rather than having to look at my typed out schedule. The paragon of accessibility. The dude, uh, that that sight impaired dude, he can't listen to your podcast and hear your schedule on your podcast? He has to listen to a dedicated video? Really? Really? He can't listen to the podcast? Cool. And it was very digestible. So we need to make a special video for him that is just like a blank screen and audio. Testable. You just click it, boom, listen, done. Banger. All right? Banger. I said, hey, why don't you implement that with a short instead? Instead of just posting that on Twitter, why not do something actually on your real YouTube channel? That way people will bring the traffic to your channel rather than your Twitter account. Yeah, it doesn't work though. I guess that makes sense, right? Now, the other use that I have for YouTube Shorts is when I have my day off once a week, I make an honest effort to try to highlight some of the best moments of the week that have happened here on DSP Gaming. <laughs> I watched them yesterday. One of them was him falling off a cliff and goat laughing. That was the whole short. That was the short. Whether it's a silly moment that happened in gameplay, whether it's a game bug or a crash, whether it's a rage-filled moment of something I screwed up, whether it's just something funny that I did uh, or a reaction that I had, whatever it may be, something that I want to highlight that I think would be interesting for you guys, I'll do a short of that as well. And usually I make one to two of these a week. And he was complaining about that that short of him falling off a cliff doesn't make uh, enough views to his liking. It didn't make enough views. He was disappointed. Like I said, on my one day off. Fantastic. So that being said, Here's what's happened with these shorts in the last two months. When I first started making them, immediately they blew up in popularity, and the first short had They like blew up in popularity. The dude's going to act like a thousand people came from YouTube shorts to his channel. Get real. For 10,000 views. 10,000 10, views. views. On a gameplay video. Yeah, this was all trolls because we were making fun of you because you looked ridiculous. Come on. It was all fucking trolls making fun of your ass. And people telling him how old he looked like because it was like a close zoom in video. People were like, dude, you look like 60 years old. What? That were most of the comments. You can go check it out. That's why it had so many views because it was one minute long and people were replaying it to make fun of him. Like six, seven months. Whoa, people were coming in droves. Seriously. So... 
to see a YouTube short get that much attention is like, whoa, what happened? And what it is is it was the the appeal of that Phil has never done a short before. Oh, yeah. And here's Phil talking to his camera phone, which makes him look different. Because remember, back then, I didn't have this new website. It's like when he jerked off and so many people watched that video. Dude, Phil has never jerked off before. It's so innovative and amazing. Um, that shows more quality. It was a, a high-definition camera phone. And people were like, whoa, I didn't know Phil looks like that. High-definition camera phone. It was literally an, uh, an iPhone. You could have just said it was an iPhone. Because <laughs> he looks blurry on his camera. So I think it was kind of a double factor of me doing shorts for the first time, plus combining that with the fact that I looked very different in the shorts because of the camera I was using. I had a better quality, okay? I looked very different is the uh, implying that people were calling him out for looking ugly as fuck and old. But what I've noticed in the last two months is that the initial interest has completely waned and the shorts just keep going like this, all right? Yes, because you spam them every single day and people don't like watching that shit every day. The one thing people like making fun of is the very first frame of the short because the very first frame is immediately when he presses the record button and he has a expressionless face, a complete like deadpan expression of like, it's almost like a, a mask is on somebody's face. It's like this how much of a non-expression he's got. And it's actually on a thumbnail to this stream right now. So you can go and, and see the thumbnail. You would see exactly what kind of face he makes. And that's why I made his eyes black. So it's like a mask. So what was first had thousands of views, then went down to 5,000 views, then went down to 2,000 views, then went down to 1,000 views. All right. Now. It's like a Michael Myers expression. The short schedule is barely getting 400 views a day, if that. Right. Repetitive, this, boring, like, stupid. A distinct down, you know, spike downward in the views that I get on the short schedule, okay? Um, as for the highlights that I do during the week, it really depends on the highlight. For example, if I do a highlight that's popular, it'll maybe get anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 views, maybe, as a short. Um, no, I don't know who Young Bay like, is. Catch on, and they do like I really don't know. views. You know, for example, this last week, I highlighted two things. I highlighted me in my Halloween costume looking like an idiot, and then also having my mic muted because I was a moron at the beginning of my Halloween event, and I make. Fun She's so self-aware. Poked fun at myself with a voiceover. Except when people made fun of him, he got butt hurt. That did all right. I think at this point it has like a little bit over a thousand views. Um, let's see. Oh, and now we're getting a live view check to see if we're going to be insecure and we're going to complain about views. Actually, it has almost 2,000 views, which I didn't even realize. Oh, I, I didn't even realize it has almost 2,000 views, man. It's going off. It's catching up. A thousand. It's almost 2,000 views. It's almost going viral. The other highlight that I made was my Modern Warfare 1 campaign, excuse me, Modern Warfare 2 campaign premiere, the first part <clears throat> where you play as Ghost. And I accidentally didn't realize you weren't supposed to walk off a cliff. And it literally is super reminiscent of Dark Souls 11, 12 years ago. Oh, yeah. Super reminiscent. You're just stepping right off the cliff and boom, instant death. So I thought that was funny. Legit, I think in one case, it's kind of silly and stupid because I'm wearing a Halloween costume and I'm muted. In the other case, it's legit funny because I'm just so funny. I walk off the cliff. The, the clips performed the opposite, I thought. I thought the cliff one would do way better. It did half as well. We're getting the exact repeat of the segment we got yesterday. Exactly the same. Yesterday, he also did a live view check to, to flex about the views and, and point out the fact that both videos did a different amount of views, and he wasn't happy with it. As the Halloween one, you see? And as I go through my shorts here, <clears throat> it's very hit or miss. It's weird because some of the short schedule videos, as little as... A week and a half ago, we're getting almost 2,000 views. But then some of them don't barely get any views. Here's a short that I did. The worst game ending I've ever seen. This was me highlighting the end of Scorn. Because you can't see anything. Views. You can't see anything in that one. Not bad. It's just literally clip clickbait yet again. Just like with the Homefront the Revolution. A piece of shit video that was clickbaited beyond belief. And it got a bunch of views. Wow, color me surprised. And then... The highlight of my Halloween uh, Fantasy Battle Royale in WWE 2K22, eh, about 2,300 views. That's not bad, you know? So I'm looking at these, and I'm like, you know, the functionality of shorts, like, how can I really use it? Can I use it to highlight content on my channel? Yes, I can. Um, but it seems to me like the short schedule maybe is not working. And this is what I was doing. You know, I did it because you guys said this is how you can implement shorts. That's why I started doing it. So I started doing it every single day, nonstop, every day. So if you guys don't feel 
there's a use for short the short schedule, if you think that it doesn't really serve a purpose, then I won't do it anymore. You know, when I started, it was getting thousands of views. Now it barely gets 424 hours. So if you don't think that there's a, a, a point to it, maybe what I'll do is I'll just do it for the rest of this week and then we'll retire it. And then what we'll do is we'll reserve shorts only for me to highlight gameplay on the channel. Okay. Whoa, it's almost like it was how it's supposed to be to begin with. Thing. I'm sure there's going to be some days when something hilarious happens in my gameplay, it's immediately going to come to mind and I'll be like, oh, I can highlight that, right? But there's going to be other days when I'm not going to remember anything and I'm going to need you guys to help me to tell what, what you want me to highlight. And normally, I don't have a lot of time to do it, but maybe if I'm doing it on a daily basis and I'm not doing the short schedule, maybe I can remember like one thing a day to highlight or maybe it would be every other day, but at least if there's something, you know, funny or silly or notable maybe maybe you can do it in between posting tweets at 2 a.m maybe that's when you can do it happens in a playthrough like yes when you don't have time for anything but you're still shit posting at 2 a.m yesterday i'm at the end of him play tale requiem i got a ridiculous game bug it was so dumb the whole graphics were glitching out and everything and maybe that could be a good highlight um or at the end of uh, modern warfare 2 i had some weird things happen some some weird glitches maybe you could highlight that right I don't know what we would have today because today we're doing Gotham Knights and Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. Maybe something funny will happen in the multiplayer, you know. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. It, maybe maybe the short schedule doesn't make sense anymore. And maybe what I should do is instead only highlight notable moments in the gameplay. But I need your feedback on that. Please give me your feedback today. Obviously, those who are live on stream right now and those who are watching this on demand. Please leave a comment on the video. Let me know. What do you think about the future of shorts, the short schedule? Bro, people have been telling you. They've been giving you feedback until now. How many people said that your constant repetition of the schedule is boring and repetitive and annoying? And it doesn't work. And now you got to ask them explicitly for advice after they've been giving it for so long. Or do you think that it doesn't really serve a purpose? But yeah. Wallowing Whiskey says, well, if the short schedule is kind of like the audio-only schedule and you did it for visual impaired people, why not continue to provide that service for them? Well, because I haven't really got much positive feedback about it. It would have been one thing if I started doing it and people were like, wow, this is really serving a purpose. I don't think it is. You know, I just don't. I don't think it is. Maybe it makes sense to just go back to the short, to doing the audio only schedule on Twitter and don't do the short schedule on my YouTube channel. Or maybe the, the visually impaired people, they can just listen to your podcast or they can listen to your daily rap that also has the schedule in it. Maybe they can do that. You know, because the podcast is an uh, audio centric piece of content and the daily rap is as well, because you don't need to be looking at DSP for this. You definitely don't. It's actually a minus if you look at DSP because he drinks all the time and he touches his face and he strokes his beard and you could see his bald spot on the head, which is not very flattering. So definitely don't look at the screen. The way I see it. I don't want to flood the channel with unnecessary stuff. And if you guys think the short schedule is unnecessary, I'd rather save the shorts for when it's something notable or important. And again, next year, I just got the notice, next year these are going to be monetized. Uh-oh. So if they're going to monetize the shorts, I want people to watch the shorts. I don't want to be just pumping out a short that no one cares about, and there's an ad on it too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I guess maybe... It, uh, from the, the feedback I'm getting in the chat, people are saying get rid of the short schedule. Yes, they've been saying this. They've been saying this. Short should be safe for clip-worthy moments to draw people to your actual playthrough. Yes. As well, common it's sense dictates. It's unappealing. I'm, I'm okay with discontinuing it. I totally am. I, I, I'll discontinue it tonight. I'll just say, hey, guys, this is. The, I just want to say goodbye because this is it for the short schedule. I got overwhelming feedback. You guys don't really like this. Uh, if you want my schedule, it's posted here on the community tab every day and on my Twitter, you know. And I talk about it every morning on the Level 1 podcast, so I don't need to do this anymore. Yeah, and you talk about it on Daily Wrap. He talks about his, his schedule for like a week in advance. So today, probably, he's going to be talking about what he's going to be playing next Monday. I'll do that tonight. Are you going to do that tonight? Look, it's okay. Feedback Man. Feedback Man. Okay, fine. Only funny moments. All right, fair enough. You're done. Good. That's exactly the feedback I wanted. If you completely disagree with this, let me know today. Leave a comment on this podcast if you completely disagree and you find those useful. But I'm, I'm just taking 
your feedback and people are just saying, yeah, you don't really need it. Like it's not really doing anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he said no, you're no. done. You think that it's not worthy. It's yeah, you're good. done. Hey, it's extra work for me too. I'll, I don't have to do it. I'll work. I'll do something else. Like I said, I can uh, I'll do something else. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I don't I have the know, time. I do this this short schedule, and maybe I could highlight a funny moment from from the game. It takes you literally a minute to do it, though. An actual minute to do it. Take out the iPhone, bust out the camera, record yourself for a minute, and then upload it. Oh, dude, I'm, I don't even have to do all this extra work. Play that day instead, if I can think of something for that day. Every day, it's not going to happen. You're not going to have a genius idea every day of what to highlight, you know? But maybe that's what I should do, is at the end of every day, think of that back of what I did that day, and think if I can think of a moment to highlight, right? Like yesterday, during the gameplay, people were outright saying, this could be a top 10 funniest moment of the year moment. And, uh, you know, we'd like to see that highlighted somewhere. But the problem was I wasn't paying attention because I wasn't thinking of doing this. And now I don't remember what it was, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> you don't remember your best okay. moment of yesterday? That is one of your best moments of the year? You don't remember that? Why not do both? Well, here's the thing. What? Here is a definite thing that I've learned over the years. You don't want to oversaturate. Really? Oh, dude, come on. Tell me about it. As you talk about the same shit every day. He had two of the segments today already that he talked about yesterday. Exactly verbatim. The same shit. Including the shorts. The same shit. And he's about to talk about Twitter. At, uh, the same segment that he had yesterday. And then we're going to shit on the game journalist. Just like we did yesterday. And then he uploaded how many? Like four videos yesterday and a daily wrap and a short. You don't want to oversaturate. He's learned so much. Mr. Feedback, Mr. Learning. All right. You don't want to be putting out a million clips a day. Not a million. If you're going to be putting Just half a million. Kind of short, you want it to be a meaningful short for that day. You don't want to have a schedule short, a highlight short, oh, a big important news update short. Now you're, now you're too much. And now it's oversaturation. You know, I learned that the hard way many years ago, uploading a million videos in a day. You don't want that. You want it to be meaningful and impactful. You don't want it to just be so much crap in your face that you don't even know what to watch, you see? <clears throat> when you take a short from a video, it will link back to the full video in the short, so it could be good for engagement. I didn't even know that. Is that true? What? I'm watching the short. <laughs> I didn't even know that. You didn't know that? Of the oh, weekend. Grandpa. Right Grandpa. Here. Nobody's gonna do that though. They're not gonna go check out the full video. This is some like, some like conspiracy theories at this point. Nobody is disengaged in Dark Side Phil's fucking content because it's trash. All of his content is for trolls, so we can make fun of his funny antics. It's not about the gameplay, and he still deludes himself into thinking it's about the gameplay. It's like, dude, you're trash at video games. You're actually trash, and you have shit commentary, and you're boring. And you have a lot of dead air. Get real. I'm gonna hold on a second. I'm gonna test this. I'm gonna test this. We're gonna make a short right now. Oh. This is true. You guys are gonna hear this play, so please bear with me. You're gonna hear this. All right. Bear with me on this podcast as I play unrelated stuff that you're not even gonna get any value from. What a great podcast. Oh, I actually, didn't auto play. So here it is. Created from DSP Gaming. If I click on that, it plays an ad. <laughs> well, no, absolutely, you guys are right. So good. It was right. He plays an ad, but then it goes to the video. Cool. Yeah, okay. I could definitely see how those are creating engagement then. As opposed to me just doing the schedule, that's not creating engagement. Because it's just me doing the schedule. It doesn't link to anything. Okay. <clears throat> Dude, this creates engagement. Okay, cool. All right, I get it. That makes sense. Uh, you know, the funny thing is by the time they could get monetized, the shorts, the views are going to have fallen off and nobody's going to care about them. And he's going to think about, oh, what, it, what can be the next thing I can do? Because now we can monetize them. Fair enough. I'm Imagine watching, watching a fucking ad for a minute long video. That, that's my, my personal hell. I, I'm not going to watch any of those. Ad block on everything. I'm getting very good feedback this morning. Thank you. Guys. Very good feedback. If only they could fix your, your broken USBs too, or just buy you a new PC. That would be amazing feedback. There you go. Chef D says, you're already posting your weekly schedule every day to your community board. Yes. Your highlights or announcements are different. You're right. All right. 
I'm taking your advice directly this morning. If you guys completely disagree with me, tell me. Leave a comment on this video if you're watching this on demand and share your opinion. But the feedback I'm getting is it's extra work. It's not effective. It's bo it's, it's not interesting. I don't have to do it. What I will do today, I'll do What about when you call people idiots? When they told you, you you repeat your own schedule too many times? A video at the end of the day and I'll say, guys, we're- Oh, you're a fucking moron. Tiring the short schedule because it doesn't seem like it was successful. Jesus well, Christ, Mr. Advice. If I can think of like a highlighted- An entire community of trolls exists to criticize them? He's taking advice now, you guys. He's Mr. Mr. Feedback, Mr. Improvement. Can do. Continuous improvement. Ooh. Uh, Over 14 years of being on level one. Now we're improving. I'll do that every day. And if you guys have feedback on what do you think is a moment you'd like to see highlighted as a short, share that with me during the live streams and I'll keep that in mind at the end of every day. <clears throat> How does that sound? Does that sound good? Oh, is he going to make them daily? Because as soon as he can make money off of it, it's going to be daily. Because he loves that shit. The yeah. daily paycheck. Oh, yeah. Do Inject this in, a, in my veins. NDO 103. What do you mean by that? Like, actually, well, here's the thing. It's actually really hard to make shorts out of this podcast. You want to know why? Because the podcast is so long. The podcast ends up being like an hour to an hour and a half. So skimming through this thing is really hard. Not saying that I wouldn't because I have. You don't remember when a fun segment happens, when a fun joke happens, when a fun moment happens. You don't remember. I lighted the podcast. Right. Before. Gin brain. You don't remember anything. But it's kind of annoying to try to find the moment. Like, for example, let's say right now, instead of doing a short schedule for tonight, tonight I do a highlight of this podcast, all right? Here's what we'll do. I'm going to do it right now. Ready? I'm going to wave my hands like an asshole. This is so this stupid. 10, 15 seconds, because if I'm looking for the short highlight tonight, all right, this will give me the idea. So let me wave my hands around like an asshole. So, like, Phil, hey, Phil, doing the short tonight. Here it is. This is the part that you need. Okay. All right, but this ahead. is not the part you need. This is a fake highlight. This is a highlight that is like contrived and intentional. Ladies, it's not genuine. It's not interesting. And gentlemen, I'm talking with my audience live here on the Level One podcast today, and they've given me some definitive feedback. Oh that my the short God. Schedule is not only kind of unsuccessful, but not needed. Every single day, I'm posting up my schedule on the community tab of DSP Gaming. What a fucking fake asshole. What a fake fucking bitch. Dude. As well as on my Twitter account, at they call me DSP. And I've seen the viewership very dramatically dip in the last month or so. This is the actual reason. This is the actual reason. He doesn't give a shit about feedback. He just gets very insecure about views. Because he used to be Mr. Views back in the day. And now he's Mr. Trash. For the short schedule. The feedback I'm getting is that I should save uh, highlights. Now he's Mr. Bum. Or things from gameplay, like funny moments and the like. So moving forward... That's what I'm going to do, all right? So I'm actually using this as a highlight, as an example of something that I will highlight every day that's important. You'll get this kind of stuff rather than the short schedule. And then you have to check out the schedule either, again, on the community tab or on Twitter. Hope this makes sense. Leave me your feedback and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot. Dude feedback. Feedback guy. There we go, Phil. I'm waving my hands, Phil. You <laughs> this this, this hand waving, man. And he's done it in the past. It's just so stupid. Here you go. It's just so, like, dented. And wheelchaired. So I'm gonna try to highlight that tonight as a short, and uh, and we'll see how it goes. All right, maybe that makes more sense to highlight things from the actual streams as shorts. No more of this short schedule nonsense. Sound good? We'll do that then. And by the way, that's easier for me. I he can use Pig Piggo to get the exact clips he wants. Yeah, that is true. That is true. He could use Pig Pig Go, but uh, that's an ego hit. Because Pick Pick Go was made by trolls who are more talented than him and know stuff about how to make a website and how to integrate the YouTube API with it. And he doesn't want to do that because he's an asshole. But he used Pick, Pick Pick Go to find his own videos when he said hateful slurs and delete those videos when they were getting taken down for community strikes. So he took down a bunch of videos. I or maybe somebody else sent it to him, which is more likely, because people write entire emails about Mr. Medicare and send them to him, allegedly. But I, I do believe that happens, because his viewers are, are that dedicated. Den denticated. That's what they are. Uh, big ups for a super chat, my channel. I like the content I'm doing. Dude, my channel just sent a super chat. <laughs> All day, then make another video. You know, I think people liked it. Because at first, it was like, oh, Phil looks totally different because the camera's different. But you guys are used to that. And it's been two months. You don't care about my face anymore. You're tired of seeing my ugly face. You know? <clears throat>
Chef D says, I appreciate how you can do shorts without pausing. You have legitimate talent for that, and I couldn't do it. I forget what I'm saying all the time. What? One take Phil. One take Phil. <laughs> That's what I used to be known as. That's what he used to be known as, one take Phil, a.k.a. fucking lazy. Lazy. Because even One take Phil. When I used to just do uh, the, the videos on demand for, for YouTube before I was even a streamer. I would, all do, I would do one take. Like, almost never would I do more than one take. Yeah, well, his shitty-ass fucking reviews are one take. He didn't even have notes. He would just sit there and ramble for 20 minutes and then put text on the screen in unrelated gameplay and upload it and expect to make a living off of it. That's one take, Phil. The one pump chump, like somebody in chat at, said. Good at thinking on the fly, and I'm good at... That's what people really called him back in the day. That's how he did Project 7 as well. It's just he showed up, he just did it in one take and didn't care about quality and expected people to edit it for him in post I'm getting it out all at once how could i do this podcast if that wasn't the case right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just something that i've grown to, to do better and better over time as well yeah which, jerk yourself off which is weird a lot metaphorically of, this time not actually literally a lot of people the older they get the harder it is for them to do that i think i've actually done better oh yeah getting the oh yeah it's not like the podcast is just a stream of consciousness and he talks himself in circles for 20 minutes. When he gets a when he gets a question or a super chat asking him something, he talks for 20 minutes about unrelated shit and then says, "I don't know." That's uh that's ask the king basically for you. Damn it. He recaps his own fucking life. You think it's hard for somebody to talk about their own life for an hour and a half a day? It's not very hard. It's not very hard. Just watch him talk about something that he acts like he knows something about and is just rambling in a word salad in a stream of consciousness that constantly gets derailed, ranting about people that wronged him in the past and things that he hates. Actually formulating, you know, my thoughts and getting them out verbally all in one go, so. Yeah, a legend. No, I never took improv classing or anything like that. It's natural younger, talent. I did a lot of public speaking when I was in, in, in school. Uh, and then at some of my jobs, you know, I was always in front of people. And then I started leading groups and doing group presentations. So it just came naturally. And then, of course, Street Fighter. Playing Street Fighter competitively. What? Having to play at a high level in front of an audience of hundreds. What? Times a thousand or more at Evo. What? Uh, got me used to doing things in front of a public setting and not getting nervous and not stuttering. <laughs> and, you know, That's why he used to be known as the walking ATM. Because he wasn't nervous at all. So people just fucking robbed him, basically. They legally robbed his ass. And made fun of him, being the walking ATM Phil. Being able to do what I do without any kind of interruption and being more more calm and smooth rather than getting nervous. So that's really where it came from. Yeah. Hello, Jade. What's Stroke going on? Stroke your own ego. Jeez. Fantastic. All right. So now, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, I'm so good, aren't I? Now let's start with the actual podcast. This is where the actual podcast begins. We got through all that. We got through the technical difficulties. We got through the shorts. Let's talk about the schedule. Oh, Let's no. Talk about We're skipping this because now we get the chance to do that. Sonic Frontiers. Sonic fucking Frontiers gets skip, skip, skip. Okay, so those are going to take priority and Gotham Knights will not be... Gotham fucking shites. ...will actually be like the culmination of what you would want out of a Sonic game. Here. Now, you may say, wait a minute. How could there possibly, possibly be... Such a discrepancy in the review scores. How could someone say it's a 9 or an 8 and someone else say it's a 2? Oh, okay. Let's see this one. Let's see this. This is the ranting at the reviewers. So basically, uh, if you want the recap on this before I've even seen it, reviewers play games real fast and they give shitty scores. That's what he's going to say. And they lie and then they try and sell it off as an objective review. And it's not objective. And DSP is objective, and he's an honest gamer, and he actually plays through the game. He doesn't fuck around like those reviewers. That's his opinion, basically. But let's let's get to hear it from the pig roach's mouth. Us gamers, 5.5 out of 10. Games Radar Plus, 4 out of 10. Digital Trends, 2 out of 10. 2. 2 out of 10, that's a pretty, pretty weird take. Okay. A 2 out of you 10. Say, wait a minute. How could there possibly... A 2 out of 10 is something like the, the the quiet man. That shit is a 2 out of 10. Possibly be 
such a discrepancy in the review scores? How could someone say it's a 9 or an 8 and someone else say it's a 2? Maybe there are different people that have different tastes in games and different opinions on games. And they express them through their reviews because they can and that's their job. And you can disagree with it and just even think that it's wrong. And in some cases it is because not all reviewers are good. But that's it. It's just subjective. You can read the review, not look at the score, because the score is just supposed to be a summary of everything that came before. So if you want to see why they gave it a 2 out of 10, you can go and read the actual review, instead of just looking at a number and being real confused. Okay. It's very simple. It's very simple. Viewers don't of shit. use a logical rating scale when they number score their reviews. They just Unlike DSP, who gave uh, Fallout 4 a 9.75 out of 10. After saying it's not a perfect game and it's a mixed bag. Don't. All right. right. If they were actually doing what I used to do when I reviewed games. which was, Oh, yeah. Okay. What I used I to do. I have a list of objective facts I'm looking for when I review a game. Objective facts. It, we're already in bullshit land. We're already in bullshit land. We're already bullshitting. Objective facts. Like what? When the game was released? Who developed it? Those are the objective facts. Not the graphics being pretty and the controls being nice. Of course, the controls can be objectively terrible for some games. And for some games, that they can be intuitive and nice. And those can be pretty objective stuff. But most of, of rating a video game is very, very subjective. The length, the functionality. The girth. The graphical quality. You know, side content versus main story content. The soundtrack. This is not objective. None of that is objective. The soundtrack is not objective. It's really not. The act or the responsiveness and, and activeness of the controls. Those are not objective because DSP is an actual fucking retard. He barely manages his way through a controller and he's been playing video games for 40 fucking years. Come on, give me a fucking break. Like, there's an objective list of facts. A whole laundry list, all right, of objective facts that I look for when I'm reviewing a game. Then, there's subjective things you take into account. Like what? Did you find it fun? How did you feel the pacing was, right? How does this compare to other Sonic games in the franchise that you've played? So, it's basically, there's a balance that you have to use when you do a review, at least. If oh, this is such a stupid a segment. Reviewer who cares Everything about he just said was subjective. Their work. And Everything. Unless it's really bad or really good. And then you can judge it as an objective thing. They're not just rushing something out to get a paycheck, you see? Which is sadly one of the problems with these reviewers. Right, yeah. They they don't rush stuff out to get a paycheck. DSPs never rush something out to get a paycheck. Never. Never. That's why KO Gaming exists. So, here's the thing. If you read these reviews, what you're going to find is a lot of subjectivity, which is fine. But if your subjectivity completely overtakes your objectivity, you've done a bad Phil's job. Phil's review of any game, there is a protagonist. It is controlled with a controller. It has graphics and colors. There are sounds. Number slash number. Number out of number. Yeah, that's how it works. The number out of number. Big ups. This is how you review a game. But this is as, as far as you can go with objective facts is all you can say is who developed the game, when it came out, and what kind of a game it is. And there there we, we get the cutoff point be, between objective and subjective. And the rest is all subjective. As a game reviewer, seriously, you have. Like, I'll give you an example. The one of the game reviews that to this day I still... Big ups your boy for a super chat. The, the Double Dragon Neo, or Neon, Double Dragon Neon review for Mitch Dyer. Okay, now Mitch Dyer isn't even a game reviewer anymore. It's a moot point. But back then, he was a freelance journalist who was hired by a game review site to review Double Dragon Neon. His review, although it had objective review points in it, completely slams the game, saying it's one of the worst ones, all right, because, or, or it's one of the worst games out at that time, because it plays like an old school game. And this person, Mitch Dyer, doesn't like old school style combat games. He feels that all games should be more modernized. Okay, that, that is a subjective review though, because it's a review. It's subjective. He didn't like it. Yeah, that there there you go. There you go. He didn't understand why it used outdated games. There you go. Okay. Was it informative though? I don't know. I guess so. Insanely low review score.
Okay. Because he did this as a freelance writer. I think it was for IGN. Basically, a lot of people skipped the game thinking the game sucked. Now, in reality... They, they couldn't go and look up a different review? They just believe one guy and then go off with it? Wow, that sign, sounds like a groupthink mentality to me. If you're going to base your opinion based on what one dude thought about it, that is pretty dumb. The game was exactly what it intended to be. An homage to the classic Double Dragon game. Hey, big ups uh, Cantu Adrian for the salt. Classic Double Dragon game. So if you were a fan salt. of classic Double Dragon, you actually loved the game. And a lot of people who played it were like, wow, what a total nostalgic factor. It's really cool. Oh, so if you're a fan, you're going to like it. Wow, what a fucking mind-blowing revelation. If you're a fan of a game franchise and a new game comes out, then you might like it more because you're a fan. Wow, that sounds pretty subjective to me because you're all a fan already. You're fucking biased. You literally cannot be physically objective about the game. To have a throwback. Since then, how many games have we had that are nostalgic throwbacks, right? Think about new Battletoads games. We just recently had a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge arcade style game. So now, this stuff is all the rage. But Double Dragon Neon was one of those games like 10 years ago that was the first of its kind, all right? Mitch Dyer subjectively destroys the game. Not okay. objectively. He doesn't sit there and cite a bunch of objective facts that are bad. He has uh, because you can. That's not the reviewer's job. I don't like games that play like old games, and he reviewed okay. it poorly. Yeah, okay, that's his review. It's probably a bad review. Sure, thing. Okay. And it. But that's his fucking job to give his stupid fucking opinion on fucking video games. That's his job. That's what he does. It's not to make objective statements about video games. And I still can't fucking believe that this 40-year-old fucking goddamn sack of shit still doesn't know what subjective and objective means and the difference between what a review is supposed to be. You're not supposed to be fucking preaching when you make a review and giving out a fucking gospel of what a game is. No, you're supposed to give your fucking opinion based on your knowledge of the game and how well you played and your skill set. Because somebody, because I've recently been playing DMC5 and it's my first Devil May Cry game, I'm enjoying it, but somebody who has more experience than me is probably going to give it a much better score because they play it much better and they get way more value than I do from it because I'm trash at the game. But I really like the game anyways. So that's my subjective opinion. I can't make an objective review of the game because I can't play it to its full potential. Really hurt this fucking game badly. Oh, it hurt okay. the game. It's almost like people should go and watch more reviews and make their own opinions on stuff and not just believe people blindly about stuff. People still fucking do this. Like, seriously, they'll review a game and be like, you know, all these great things about it, but personally, it's not my cup of tea, so the game's bad. Here's a bad review score. And it's kind of like... Okay. Not the point. That is the point. Review. If you're doing that, a literally is the point. Review for any kind of a journalistic site. If you're doing it for your own YouTube channel, that's one thing. But if you're sort doing it, for what? Some company. No, it's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. They're exactly the same thing. That's supposed to be put into an aggregate review score on Metacritic or whatever. Okay. You have a journalistic responsibility. No, they don't. Integrity in your review, and not because you're having a fucking hissy fit because you had a bad day. You know, oh, on my way to work today, I went to Starbucks, and the barista there... This kind of reminds me when DSP shit on his fans for not giving him money when he played Scorn because his car broke down and his dishwasher broke down. Isn't that the same shit? And he didn't aim his aggression at a video game. He aimed his aggression at his fucking fans because he didn't give him money. So get off this bullshit... And get fucked, DSP. You fucking moron. Spelled my name wrong. My name is Phil, but he spelled it uh, Philip with two L's. And Philip doesn't have two L's. It only has one. Oh, you got all the L's. You, you get more L's added to your name daily. Every single day, you get one more L. He spelled my name wrong. And my caramel... 40 years worth of L's. And look how fucking salty he is at some random stupid ass fucking reviewers giving games a bad score because he thinks that gamers are just sheep and are going to look at a stupid IGN review and then be like, I'm not going to fucking this uh, fucking play this game because it's bad. Slightly cold. 
So I went to work to review- Because guess what? The YouTubers also gave Gotham Knights a low score. And they said it's a mess. And it's laggy and the co-op isn't that good. And the graphics aren't that good. And the world isn't all that good. And the combat isn't all that fluid. And that Batman Arkham Knight that came out broken is still better than this game. How many years after the fact? Five years? Seven years? Yeah. Still. You Sonic Frontiers today. And already I was in a pissy mood. Oh, by the way, I only had 24 hours to review the game. So I had to play the entire game in one sitting. And I didn't like two things about it. Therefore, the game's a 2 out of 10 today. You know? That's how these fucking reviewers operate sometimes. And the funny part about it is, they get away with it. No one... They get away with it. Out because they've... Oh, reviews are completely subjective. Wrong, motherfucker. Wrong. Review... <laughs> He's so fucking butthurt. It's hilarious how butthurt he is. It's amazing. <laughs> Bruh. Reviews are not completely subjective. I remember they had a review Halo and the reviewer was a COD fan, so Halo and Gears scored lower than COD, but he said it so you knew to look at Anath. <laughs> well, yeah, you should look at other reviews. If you see a review like that, you're like, well, this shit is trash. I'm going to watch somebody else, like uh, like Yahtzee with uh, zero punctuation. Even though he's he's pretty cynical about it, I, I end up agreeing with him more than I agree with other people. Even on games that I like, I find some flaws that he can point out that I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's a pretty good point. Doesn't necessarily bother me, but it's a pretty good point. They can have some... Big ups uh, ice for a super chat. ...to them, but they're supposed to have objectivity as well. You can't off-put all of the objectively good things about a game just because you subjectively don't like it, okay? It's bullshit. And if people do this in a review and they're doing it for a major site, they're doing a major disservice to the games industry because that shitty review hits the aggregate score and now it hurts the game overall. And it's actually funny because there was two or three people who were posting up to this morning on Twitter and they're like, you know, if you actually look at the reviews for Sonic Frontiers, really no one is giving it a monstrously glowing review. No one is saying, oh... This is the magnum opus of Sonic we've always wanted. And always, everyone will always remember Sonic Frontiers is the best Sonic game of all time. No one's saying that. What people are basically saying is some... And now he's recapping people's opinions. So yeah, that's, that's going to be super reliable. ...of the things in the game are good. Some are okay, but they could be implemented better. And if a sequel comes out, it'll probably improve and then be really, really good. Oh, yeah. In so general, what, you so what? Just wait for the next one, but don't buy this one, but buy the, this one? I don't even get what he's trying to say. So it's a mixed bag, basically. So it's, what, a 5 out of 10, according to DSP? No, a, D, uh, a DSP a mixed bag is a 9.75. These reviews. So how the fuck is there a review that's a 1 out of 10 and a 2 out of 10? And what people are saying is, here's the sad part. Right now, the game overall on Metacritic is scoring like a 7. Metacritic. Okay? But if you take out the fucking outliers, those two low review scores, it's better. It's way better. It's like an 8. So okay. now, between a 7 and an 8. Oh, and this fucking jerk-off. I hate, I hate numbered reviews by default. Because you can't take a piece of art and slap a number on it. Because it, it's dumb as shit by objectively it's stupid because you can't rate art like this you can't say this piece of art is a seven because i say so it doesn't work like that and he fucking jerks himself off all day about numbers and his specific numbering that he does with a 9.75 this game is a 3.126 because i say so because I did the number crunching, and that's exactly how much this piece of art costs, and how much this piece of art is worth. Hey, because two assholes fucking reviewed it like at, like dickheads, you know? And it's like... And one person even made a, a point, they said, if you take out those two outlier review scores right now... Okay, like when you take out the troll votes in a poll. If you take out the things that I don't like, this thing is much better. This is actually, listen to this. The best rated Sonic game in 11 years. Okay. Does that mean it's the best Sonic game? Subjectively? What if I like the older games more? Except Sonic Mania. And I make a review about it. We're talking... Because I scam my way onto uh, IGN. Sonic games. Bleh. Sonic games are in a whole different ballpark. They're not even the same. But of all the three... So we're talking Sonic Boom, Sonic uh, Frontiers. Um, what was the other one? Sonic Generations. Like, they're basically saying the last game to be reviewed this well was Sonic Colors. You know, 11 fucking years since they've had one this good.
You know what I'm saying? So this whole system needs to be revamped. I hate how. Reviews. How are you gonna do it? Get away with one out of ten review scores without justification, and then it fucking hits the fucking re aggregate score and destroys the game. You know? It's just it's stupid. How can I mean? Honestly, objectively, how do you give a game a one out of a ten? One out of ten basically means the game boots and that's it. So the game booted. But after that, every moment you played the game was misery. The controls didn't work. The graphics are horrendous. The music is shit. The game Let me remind you, Homefront the Revolution is, according to DSP, the worst game he has ever played. And he's an objective critic, right? He's an objective review reviewer. Therefore, that game is a 0 out of 10 or a 1 out of 10. Homefront the Revolution. That, just a bland piece of shit game. It's a 0 out of 10. It's the worst game he's ever played. Gameplay loop is terrible. The game crashes like crazy. That's a 1 out of 10, okay? If the game's not that case and you give it a 1 out of 10, you should be fired immediately. Like, whoever, you know, editor should say, what the fuck is this? Get out. Don't ever come back. You're, you're, you're irresponsible. Uh, what if they justified their rating in their review, though? Did you actually read the review? Did you? Or are you just bitching about stuff that you don't like? without even knowing why you don't like it. Because you saw a fucking number and it pissed you off. This is like a fucking Anthony Fantano fan that got a low rating to the some album that they liked. And they're like, oh, fucking Anthony, you fucking melon. Why did you give this album a seven? It's an eight. God damn it, it's a fucking eight. Maybe even a nine. And it has some bangers on it. God damn it, you melon. Journalist, we don't need your kind here. You're just fucking things. It's like almost you should have watched the 15 minutes leading up to the rating everyone you know but it's what i mean people get away with this shit and it hurts it hurt a game like this it could legitimately hurt the amount of people who check it out and buy it because someone's irresponsible you know so for me uh i'm interested in it i bought it already it's pre-installed and i'm playing it and you know what if it's not that good it's not that good this has happened to me before i bought sonic boom we played it two sessions and dropped it it was a piece of dog shit right uh I got Sonic Forces. We played the whole game. It was very disappointing. Um, I'm hoping for the best. I'm actually hoping that this is legit good. Um, I don't know if it will be or not. I really don't. Um, I kind of shrug. So I don't know. If, you know, We'll see. Tomorrow, though, when I play it, I'll be wearing a Sonic t-shirt. And yes, <clears throat> it will be eligible. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, the Sonic hat will be eligible for the Sonic Frontiers stream. We're pulling it out of retirement. Because you guys already requested it. I said, why not? Sonic hat? Hey, there we go. Tomorrow, depending on... The, the hat that he didn't want to wear because people said he looked autistic wearing it, he's wearing it, you guys. We're back. The lol cow hat. We're back. We're back online. Go. We'll see. Okay. So there you go. All right. So that's tomorrow. We're going to be doing Sonic uh, Frontiers on the first stream. Tomorrow night, we're going to do a late night chill stream of Disney Dreamlight Valley. Why? Because I'm enjoying the chill streams breaking up the uh, nonstop new release stuff that I've been doing. And when we played it the other day, we actually unlocked a bunch of new stuff. We got a new Islander. We got a new area of the map with another new character that we didn't recruit yet, but we're doing missions for one. this game. I'm so hyped that I want to get hyped for Ragnarok. By the way, this was a part of the schedule segment. You see how he puts in the drama segments during the schedule so you can't look away? I've added them already. Uh, we'll pathetic. What happens today. Uh, you know, in regards to if we see him or not, right? Thanks in advance to anyone who contributes in any way today. I appreciate that. And uh, let's see how it goes. But maybe we'll see some cool God of War animations. So I'm playing Ragnarok all day long on Wednesday. The entire first stream and the entire second stream. So we're going to get at least five or so sell my dream back and forth between the two. People won't want spoilers. But after that initial day... He, he talked about this exact same thing yesterday. Exactly. Like, almost spoilers, literally. You guys are going to be way ahead of me. You know me, I, I balance everything as a variety streamer. So I would hope that you will join me. Hey, Derek Bot, what's up, dude? Through live on stream as I play it. How's it rocking, month, dude? Month and a half, because if the game is easy, let's get your band. Let's get you leaned out of here. Time to Bye. play it like I usually do. Fucking idiot like in it. chat. You know, talking about sexualized content. Okay, so please join me starting on Wednesday. Should be an exciting and fun day. I hope you will, and I'm very excited for God of War Ragnarok. Okay, fair enough.
That's the schedule. That's the schedule. Big ups. Let's ramble about Elon Musk. Um, you guys know about the members' goal, the Christmas event. I really don't want to talk about that today. We already talked about it a few times this week. Uh, Magic 8-Ball, if you tip $8 or more in a single tip, you get to ask the 8-Ball a question. Oh, we're not going to beg for members. Question here, ready? Oh, that sucks. Will we complete one of the major supervillain side missions today? Stupid face he makes when he looks at the eight ball. <laughs> the look at this shit. <laughs> Outlook not so good. Ooh. Uh oh. I wonder if something's gonna hold us up. That's not good. By the way, I have dust all over me. What did you <laughs> were you about that? Who knows Elon Musk bought Twitter? Hey, there we go. There's already being thrown. There we go. Hey, no one really knows what's gonna happen with Twitter. Um one of the weird things that I'm seeing happen is daily you guys keep asking me, am I going to spend $8 a month to keep my blue check mark? And I answer the same exact way every single day to you guys. If there's a reason, like if I get features. He's going to do it. 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 Even if there's no features, which there will be some, he's going to do it. Because that check mark is a symbol of something. Just like the vest is a symbol of positivity. That he is someone... At least somewhere he is someone on Twitter, even though he has to lock his replies because people don't like him. On subscription to Twitter that benefit me and my business, then I would pay it. You're going to benefit if his just, business. Oh, you keep your check mark? <clears throat> then no, I don't see the point. No, Elon said that they're going to split revenue with creators. Therefore, he's going to be in a position where he could possibly make money off of Twitter. So yes, he's going to pay it. And the other thing is people seem to be very confused about people who can have and not have the blue check mark, some are like, oh, at $8 a month, you just get it. And others are like, no, you have to still verify yourself as a person. And no one seems to be in agreement. I don't think they're, I don't think people even know what's going on. Okay. I think people are so confused uh, about this that they're all scratching their heads with this Twitter thing. They don't know what's going on. Okay. Now, I saw someone post up a giant post on Twitter saying, okay, starting soon, they didn't have a date yet. But starting soon, if you become a Twitter Blue member for $8 a month, here's what you get. Blue check mark, priority in search results, and basically your comments show up higher up in priority of everyone else's on, 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 a, on a thread. You get to literally buy engagement. Phenomenal, Elon. Big ups. Really to post longer videos and a few other things. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, is that what I would want? I don't know. I'm not sure yet. You know, if this, and then the thing is, I'm like, is this legit? Because then I go to my own, I'm in my own Twitter app on my phone, and there's a, a Twitter blue section. I click on it, and it says it's $5 a month, and all it lists is the other features that already are available for Twitter blue, and nothing of what someone just posted up. So where the hell did they get the post from? I can't even find it anywhere. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of misinformation going on around Twitter right now. But the big drama going on on Twitter right now happened yesterday so apparently what happened it wasn't just one person it was a group of people but one person i guess got most of the attention and the ire so here's what happened <clears throat> excuse me some people took it upon themselves all right to change their accounts around to try to impersonate elon musk on twitter they changed their account name now you can change your account name at any time I've done it myself. Like, I changed it to DSP, the Unstoppable, DSP, the Spooky for Halloween. I, right now, I think it says DSP, the Unragnarokable, you know, to celebrate God of War this week. So I change my name every once in a while to, you know, be pertinent to something going on. But your Twitter handle stays the same. So it's still at they call me DSP no matter what, but it's your actual name that you can change around, okay? Um, so I guess what some people were doing is that even in the, the thing that really the problem was that these people had a blue check mark they were verified so what they were doing is they were changing their name to say elon musk then they would actually take the profile picture off of elon musk's account and put it on their own so essentially they were trying to make their account look just like elon musk's the only thing you could tell to discern between the two was the number of followers and the fact that their at handle was different. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't one or two people. It was a handful <laughs> of people. It was comedians and a few other people who were doing this. And they were basically trying to impersonate Elon for comedy purposes. However, they went about it totally the wrong way. And I think that they kind of shot themselves in the foot. Allow me to explain. Kathy Griffin, the comedian, 
who many years ago got the ire of the internet <laughs> by posting up a picture of her fucking Kathy Griffin. Head of Donald she Trump. jumped on her dead mother's account after she got banned to complain about being banned. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> Trump, while he was the president. Damn. And what I realized from these two days is that the generation that constantly complains about my generation are much bigger fucking whiners than my generation. Because I was, I was looking at 40-year-old fucking people on Twitter crying, crying about Elon Musk and writing salty fucking tweets. Some actual, like, po political people that discuss politics, they were crying while people were making shit posts about it. Damn, a bunch of fucking whiners, like 40-year-old boomers, crying on the worst platform, the worst social media, after probably Facebook, because Facebook is just, I don't even consider that existing, because that's just for a, a whole different generation of people. Okay. She got in major trouble for it uh, all over the place. She wanted a public apology campaign that she was off base and all this shit. Okay. So she, she does this. She impersonates Elon Musk. And she proceeds to go on a series of tweets trying to make people think that she's him, endorsing Democratic candidates and saying people should vote for Democrats in the election this week in the United States. Okay? Some people might think that's funny. That's actually bad. You can. That's identity theft. As someone who has had their identity stolen, that's identity theft. We try to influence an election. Because <laughs> I hate to say it, people are dumb. All right, just being honest here, a lot of people out there are very gullible. They don't take the time to look into something. Maybe there's someone out there who thinks that Elon Musk is a very smart, influential guy and they should do what he says. And if they see Elon Musk saying, hey, go vote for your local Democrat, they're going to go do it because they're that gullible. All right? I'm not saying voting for the Democrat is the wrong move or the right move. What nope, I'm, saying, I'm not saying anything, you guys. Someone and actually <laughs> make someone do something political because they thought it was that. Oh, the way he made that safety net for himself. Hey, I'm not saying anything. You can, you can vote for whatever you want. Is Bleh. completely wrong. I don't even care if you think it's a joke. It's not a joke. You're it's not a joke. It's identity election. theft. Why You're trying to influence an election. That shit. <laughs> All right? Dude. That kind of level of impersonation could actually have criminal repercussions. Oh, yes, uh, yes. It's identity theft. All right. To shitpost on Twitter when everybody else is literally doing it. Because people all also know the context to this. They know the context to this. A million people did that same shit. Jesus Christ. And DSP needs to complain about it because he's one of those gullible people that is going to fall for this nonsense. Now, I'm not truck outside backing up making a noise okay adhd kicking in all right i am not absolutely not going to come out here and say i defended anything elon musk has done or twitter has done that's not my point i'm trying to objectively report what's going on right now objectively okay? report what ended up happening was kathy griffin and others not just her ended up getting their twitter accounts suspended now, yeah, it was funny as shit. Suspended, we're so funny. Suspended again? I don't know. I've seen confusion. I don't know. Yeah, but basically, those uh, accounts got suspended, you know, and rightfully so. First of all, impersonation is not allowed on Twitter. It's in the terms of service. You cannot try to actively impersonate someone else. This has happened to me many times over the years where someone steals my profile picture, they rename their account to say DSP Gaming, and then they try to go out and talk shit and make me look bad, and then the accounts get reported and, uh, you know, then they you know they get uh, shut down. So anyone impersonating anyone on Twitter shouldn't be allowed to begin with. But these are people who have verified accounts who are public figures who have an audience who they should realize that when they do shit like this, you could very irresponsibly influence people to do things because they're gullible and they'll actually think that's the person doing it. He thinks everybody else is gullible. That's the thing about DSP. He thinks everybody else is a sheep as he is the biggest fucking sheep and he believes everything. Every single thing he sees on the internet, he believes. So I he falls for every single scam. He's the ultimate consumer, the ultimate sheep. Absolutely positively do not condone the impersonation on Twitter. I think it was completely wrong that anyone did it. Now, to the flip side of this, the reaction was that Twitter outright suspended several accounts. 
Now, what ended up happening was this became big news. Oh, my God, Kathy Griffin has been suspended. And then she started going on her deceased mother's Twitter account. I'm not kidding. Yeah, this is a grown-ass woman doing account. shit like this. Posting up there because she has ownership and access to it. Saying, hashtag free Kathy Griffin. Oh, this is bad. I should be unbanned. And this is messed up. Fucking like boomers, that. man. Yeah. The fucking boomers. <laughs> They're taking over. They, they don't get that social media is for fucking shit posting and calling people morons and idiots and then they, they need to take everything mega seriously um because this became <laughs> it's a so fucking story hilarious think would happen immediately twitter posts up an amended thing and so did elon he posted up an amended thing effective immediately if you impersonate anyone on twitter you're gonna get suspended it was always been a rule. We've been lax about it, but now it's just straight across the board. If you're impersonating someone, you're going to get suspended, period. What about parody, though? Is he going to talk about the parody? Immediately, people Asterisk. start getting suspended all over the place. Seriously. All over the place. <laughs> and now, what happens? Well, wait a minute. Well, if they got suspended, can you imagine the clout I'll get if I get suspended, too? So what starts happening you start getting content creators. You start getting anyone. Everyone's trying to do it. How can I impersonate Elon and get banned? And you got guys like, what is it? H3H3 podcast, you know, a, a group there. You know, H3H3 Productions. What's his name? Ethan Klein. He did it. He got suspended. Um, you know, a bunch of people. Who else? He doesn't know anybody else. Try to can give another example. Oh, look at me. I'm the <laughs> cool kid bandwagon. I'm the rebel. I'm, I'm it's not about being the rebel. It's about shit posting about shit posting and they had some funny posts and then they got leaned in for them because elon bust but raging against authority raging to against authority on the internet let me do exactly what i was told not to do and push buttons and see if i can get banned or not now, they just didn't read the terms of service i don't think he's gonna say that but let's let's hear him say it about this is <clears throat> the parody in the original post that twitter and elon had made they said Unless you outright state your account as a parody. Yeah. If you say this is a parody account, then you can impersonate because if it says it's a parody account, no one should believe it's the real person. But apparently, Ethan Klein and others did outright say in their their accounts, this is parody, and they got suspended anyway. No, they didn't say it hard enough because you need to put it in your bio. You need to put it in, in your name. You need to put it in a lot of places. And they didn't read that. And there were screenshots going around of the TOS. But yeah. I'm I'm so fucking tired of this. I've never been tired of some internet shit faster than this. It's just so obnoxious. It was like a a nuclear explosion of of just like bullshit for a day, and I got completely tired of it. And now this motherfucker is talking about it, which makes it even more worn out and tiring. All right. So now there's a big war on Twitter. What's allowed and what's big not? Big war. Censorship. Or was it actually just finally enforcing the terms of service and all of Well, that? they were twerking for it. They were twerking for it. They were making these posts to, to make fun of Elon Musk on purpose, to show off his own hypocrisy and his own how his own rules are not being enforced. Of course, and they got he the lean projecting in. projecting his own insecurities to Twitter, smiley face. He projects his own insecurities on, on everything that exists, basically, except on himself, everything else. Shit. And all I do is I sit back and I look at it all like this. Oh, I'm yeah, I sit. Fucking immature losers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what he thinks. That's why he made that salty fucking post and left the replies open so he can get clout. Yeah, that's what he does. Oh, what a bunch of fucking immature losers. Exactly DSP is thinking about that. Exactly he is thinking about that. Mr. Cloud Chase. Mr. Calling People Sir on Twitter. He is thinking about that. Definitely. This was, this was what people were doing yesterday on the internet. You know, this was the important thing to humanity. <clears throat> was that people wanted to impersonate Elon Musk. And Elon kind of, you know freaked out about it right admittedly i think we can look from both different perspectives you can say did he freak out about it impersonate at the same time man did it seem like he was very sensitive to it like a lot of people are calling him a narcissist that he would be impersonated and that now he's now he's suspending accounts left right up and down at the same time uh it's obvious that these people <laughs> were trying to piss off elon when they did it it wasn't that yeah i was didn't know i'm innocent no they were literally poking the fucking hornet's nest yeah to to get it was it. funny though their post was real funny attention because what do you think they'll be talking about all day today oh my god i was suspended from twitter 
Now I have a bunch of people coming to my content because I could talk about it because drama, 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 right? You chose to broke you the law. I don't, Live with the consequences. You know, I hate to say it. When you get situations like this, I don't think there's any winners. I think we're all losers, right? No matter. No, you're you're a loser. No matter. You're a loser. We still lose. Humanity as a whole looks stupid as shit. Well, people that don't take social media like Twitter seriously, they're not the losers because they get to laugh at this shit. They get to look at it and they get to be like, oh, look at this fucking ridiculous nonsense. DSP is a loser because he's a loser always. He always takes the L. That's why Philip has a 15 million L's in it. When this stuff happens, everyone. We're all losers. Everyone is dumb. Shit, right? Like, is there a serious one person who comes out smelling like roses out of his dumb, a dumb situation like this? Right? No. This is just really stupid on all fronts. I mean, yeah, Elon Musk is dumb in this because uh, the Tesla, the stocks are tanking. And apparently he got a bunch of like loans or some way to finance buying Twitter that was not reliable and he needs to take out more, fired a bunch of people. So that's like major news. It's all fucking funny. But people that just look at Twitter as a place to shitpost and don't take it seriously and they just look at those people that take it super seriously, like those check marks that think they're being silenced and that equate this to like to the Holocaust and shit like that. Cause I saw a couple of posts like that. They're like, really, 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 really. Makes me actually feel bad about that. They're the losers. Cause, cause they're a bunch of grown ass people that go on a crusade on Twitter. Human today. That shit is cringe. We're doing this dumb shit. And this is the big discourse today. All right. Now, ultimately, Yes, if, if Twitter is going to continue to be any kind of an influential social media site, they need to start having outright stated and enforced rules so people know what is allowed and what's not. Even if they agree with the policy or not, the problem with Twitter is that it's always been subjective enforcement. People have been doing fucked up things on Twitter for decades and get away with it, and then all of a sudden one person gets treated one way and another person gets away with everything. So how do you know what's really the in and out of what you can do on there and what you can't? And the truth is you can't when it's so... Because the, the, the only way where they could enforce everything, everything, is to have a bunch of bots that go super wild west on your ass and are, are super programmed to take down everything that goes against the rules, everything that they detect. And then it's going to become a, a place where you can't do anything. Because at any point, you might get taken down, you might get suspended for something that the bot took out of context or it misunderstood. Kind of like when I had the Nightbot in chat that was going crazy when people were saying Nightbot and was like uh, timing people out. So this is the only way they can do it. Because Twitter has an enormous amount of data that gets posted on there every second that people could not screen and fairly enforce the rules. And the only way you can do that is through bots. And bots aren't all that reliable. And, and having the internet police is not that reliable because it, it can't always be fair. Elective or enforcement, you'll never know. Just like on YouTube, because what I'm doing now is against TOS. But where the bots are, where is the Susan bot it's supposed to be doing, you know? So that's majorly because there being uh, a million more hours of content uploaded as I'm streaming this and making fun of this goofy asshole. And I'm calling him slurs. I feel has always kind of had an issue. Uh, with with on Twitter side when you're wishy washy and you don't know what's going on, how do you know how to behave, right? So, I definitely think that it's Twitter's fault. I definitely think it's the people trying to poke the hornet's nest fault. And yes, it's Elon's fault as well. Ultimately, he owns the site. He's responsible for the shit that happens on it. And now we got a bunch of drama is based on nonsense, right? Who knows what's gonna happen? At this point, it's just so silly because, I, like, who cares, right? But people are like, this is big news. I had people coming on my stream last night. But you made it big news, though. You gave it a lengthy segment. On my Modern Warfare stream and talking about it. I was like, but I apparently, it's not big news. If it's not big news, then just don't talk about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm not following this now. Dude, I don't even care. Today to figure it out because it's so dumb. You know? uh, Ethan Klein being banned is pretty funny to me because of two things. First of all, the things he posted, I had a quick laugh at. I thought they were pretty funny. Because it was about uh, Jeffrey Epstein hanging out with Musk, and it was kind of funny. And also, Ethan Klein being banned is always funny because he complains about it like it's the end of the world every single time. It's so hilarious. 
I use social media, you know, to, to, to put out information about my business. Okay? Right. And shitting on people. And I use social media. The grandstand on people. Every once in a while, I'll do a little bit of commentary about stuff. Commentary. That's how it's called now. Commentary. Well, Ethan Klein was doing commentary. When I it was humorous parody commentary. To, um, but this kind of shit, like people who just make it, oh, this is this is what I'm doing today. Social media drama. This is today. This is Monday for me. I just got to shake my head and be like, <laughs> really? Like, this is what's happening in humanity. Twitter drama today, right? It is pretty funny, though. If you don't actually care about it, you don't take it seriously, it's funny. It, it, all of it is hilarious. I just wanted to report on it. I give you some of my takes on I it. report on it. We're going to move on from We're it. We're Keemstar now. Right? I'm not We're reporting. getting involved in it, okay? <laughs> not getting involved in it. Even though I posted about it, left my replies open. Hint, hint. <clears throat> okay. Swing by. By the way, I'm just curious if I open my window if the camera's going to fuck up. I don't know. That was not successful. Yes, it did. Okay. It's like a nuke <laughs> went off outside. I'm going to get blackout shades for that. I reported that employees will receive additional pay or compensation. Oh, DSP is going to get additional pay. Based on the aggregate review score that said game received. Oh, no, not and that. When you're in a situation. Not going to get any of that. You might have one or two assholes who just don't take their job seriously. Like it seems is going on right now with Sonic uh, Sonic Frontiers. A one and a two review score. That's dragging down that aggregate score. How do you think they feel? Right? The vast majority of people think our game is at least decent to good. Two assholes had a bad day. You know, so they're going to start like sucking off every game. Guy they're going to start sucking off every game. Now Now they're, they're currently giving out sevens and eights for like mediocre games. IGN been doing that for a long time. They just got... FIFA comes out, it gets like an 8. Why? It's the same shit. The same shit. And it, uh, there was this video of, uh, I think it was Alana Pierce, saying that the, the 7 is the average game score, because average games are 7 out of 10. They're not a 5 out of 10 as an average number, right? Uh, uh, between 1 and 10, 5 is the average. But no, a 7 is the average, an actual positive number. Fucking. This was a pretty old clip, but it, it it still annoys me. I don't know. He just has a bug up his ass about it. Because I hate the number scores. Because you, you just can't. Just read the review. Pay attention. Listen. And go watch other people talk about it and make up your own mind. So now we're getting... Because you're spending your own money. You're going to spend your own money just because some jackass says it's a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Fucked out of money because of two assholes. Like, how the fuck do we have an industry that operates like this? Right? All right. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Genesis Gaming re-upped their membership for nine months at the super supporter level, which is the extra supportive level. Thank you so much for that. It says, I am ready for God of War. Digital Deluxe bought and preloaded. Cannot wait. I bought the standard edition, which was $70. I have not yet preloaded it. I've heard it's giant. So what I'm thinking of doing is tonight, after we adjourn with Modern Warfare 2, I might actually get my PS5 hooked up to the Ethernet and get it preloaded on there. So okay. It's, you know what I mean? I'm a little nervous about waiting till the day before. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Oh, That's dumb as shit. Trying to load it, so I think I might actually preload it tonight. Yeah, as a little just, heads just up. do it. So, sure. Let's see, do do it. Okay, now we get to the tip side of things. Our first tip of the day. Uh, he hit a hundred bucks, by the way, because we're doing a a hat goal, a hat uh, poll. I mean, from Snow Carl. Why is he uh, crying about now? Uh, he cried about Elon Musk. He cried about video game reviewers pretty extensively. And he cried about people not wanting his YouTube shorts. And he's going to stop doing the schedule as a YouTube short. And that's basically the whole pre-stream. Any updates on your interview? And I saw your segment on Meta Metacur. Do you think your requirements for the interview are too strict? A lot of people have non-perfect past, but might still be good options to do the interview. Hey, big up, Snow Carl. Well, funny enough, you bring this up. First of all, do I have any updates as of today? No, nothing concrete. I am still in talks with people, and I will have a... He's in talks. It's like fucking hostage situations going on. For this jerk-off to get a fucking interview, it's hostage situation. It's like he's a fucking royal family having to be interviewed, and they have to screen people for it. What a fucking... Okay. Um, both <sighs> people are completely misreporting everything. They're misreporting everything. I've seen multiple people on the internet who are salty that I'm not going to do the interview with them. Right. Reporting. Oh, you see, Phil's just turning down everyone. No, I no. know you because you're an asshole. You know, I want nothing to do with you. That's why I'm not doing the interview with you. 
it's not that I don't want to do the interview. It's I don't like you. These constant looks to the left is just such okay. a bitch move. And there's several people who are now misreporting things like that, saying shit about me. Like, oh, Phil was never serious about the interview. No, I just don't want to do it with a piece of shit, which you are, which is why I'm not doing the interview with you. Cool. If you're going to call somebody a piece of shit, just name drop them already. And not give him this face. And then just be, oh, yeah, you're a fucking piece of shit garbage. Take that as you will. Okay. Take that as you will. Um, I saw a whole segment where M Medicare, I guess a day ago or two days ago, was on his own show. And he responded to my segment on the Level 1 podcast the other yes. day. Remember I had that email? Yes, it's basically the equivalent of what you did, he did to you. How is that bad? He warned me about him and said, do not do the interview with him because he's got a very bad past. And he's basically going to screw you over in one way or another. Uh, don't, you know, he'll probably try to trap you. He'll probably insult you and all this. So what the funny part about it was is that I honestly said I'm not going to do the interview with him. And then I saw this video pop up in my feed yesterday on YouTube. And I'm like, I'm interested to see what his actual response is. Because I've gotten messages from people who are apparently his fans. <laughs> I really hope you watched that because that, that segment was a, a hailstorm of N-words. And he's legitimately wants to... And the chat, because I watched that shit live on Odyssey, the chat was very positive. A very positive, wholesome, accepting chat. Interview you, this is not a trap. This is not a joke. There's reasons, and I'm not going to share those reasons, but there's reasons why he really wants to legitimately interview you. And he seems like he's changed over the last several years, and it is a serious offer. So I'm like, oh, okay, let me watch his response and see, you know, what he had to say. I'm not kidding you. Within 30 <laughs> seconds of his response, he says the N-word. Whoa! I was like, what? Somebody said the N-word on the internet, dude. And he says it, I'm not kidding, like 10 or more times. <laughs> yeah. In his fucking response. <laughs> yeah, dude, Medicare. He, like, this dude doesn't even know who Medicare is. He was actually, like, considering at some point doing a thing with Medicare. Like, at some point, in his mind, it crossed his mind. Dude, I should do the thing with fucking Medicare. I wonder who this guy is. Like, you really don't know who this guy is? <laughs> Wow, how mind-blown he is. Whoa, he said the N-word. I was like, what? What? And he says it, I'm not kidding, like 10 or more times. Yes. In his fucking response. It was wild. What the fuck? Yeah, he's fucking Mr. Medicare. He's like, uh, uh, he, like, you don't know about him. Like, and he's just saying it off the cuff. Like, it's natural. Like, it's fine to say. It's just, it's a totally cool word just to say it nonstop. <laughs> That's why he's on Odyssey. Why, why do, you, do you think he's not on YouTube? Because he's super positive. I'm like, where is this? He's buddies with Ethan Ralph. And by buddies, I mean mortal enemies, I guess. Oh, he did this over on that Odyssey site where I guess you don't get in trouble for shit like that. Because if you sat here on YouTube and did shit like that, you'd be banned. You can't no shit. You that over and over and over. So the other funny part is I watch, I did watch the whole response. He literally doesn't actually say, disprove anything about what I said. Like in my response, I said, listen, this person who wrote me the email says it's a trap, says the guy's going to be nasty to me. Okay. Says that this is not some kind of an effort to redeem himself. Yeah, it's not. To my troll. No, it's not. He's basically going to be a jerk. Yeah. I'll constantly have people saying racist stuff. Yeah. And all this. And essentially he doesn't actually counter any of it he just laughs he yeah laughs funny yeah wow. it's fucking funny it's literally hilarious wow. what yes i i i made so, someone commit suicide and of course i don't think he's serious about it or he doesn't believe it but he doesn't disprove it or say anything about it he just laughs ha 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 this was said <laughs> about me ha 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 gee i wonder who wrote that email i don't know ha 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 yes Dude, you that's how people watch dsp that's how people fucking watch DSP. They watch him and they go, ha ha ha, this guy is such a fucking idiot. Ha ha ha. You literally didn't counter anything. You literally just laughed at everything and just moved on. So yes. why would anyone want to do anything with you? No, the, like, it was kind of, nobody thought it would be legit. Dude, you, you must be an actual, like, a dent head to think that people thought legitimately DSP would do an interview with Mr. Medicare. Literally. You must be, like, delusional to a, a different degree of existence. 
You did a whole segment laughing at nasty things said about you. Yes. You try to defend yourself. No. N word like twelve times. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I'm doing the interview with you. No, that was never serious. Just like when Ethan Ralph offered to do a fucking interview with DSP. Because he thought that DSP would show up and shit on Medicare. Because Ethan Ralph has Medicare living in his head rent free. Along with a bunch of other people. It's like a whole apartment complex up in there. Because there's a lot of space. Because it's all I'm empty. just shocked that there's someone who says it more than him. <laughs> He's like, what? He can get away with it and I get suspended? Huh? And he get all these super chats. Like, what? People give money to this guy? He should mention the money that he got. Because he, he, he got a lot of super chats on Odyssey. <laughs> wow. Whatever they're called up there. Super, I don't know, something else. It's like, you want to talk about lack of effort, not even fucking trying. I yeah, mean, no, he wasn't. Lack of effort. It was never serious, DSP. Nobody ever thought you would gonna, he would, you were going to take him on his uh, offer. Nobody ever thought about that. Uh, big ups, uh, the dude for the super chat, dude. Wait, I can't see your name. I need to give you an actual shout out. Gengar Green. Big ups. Anyway, um, let's continue on here. Let's wow. move on. Ladies and gentlemen, shout out to NDL103, who has just tipped me. $100. <laughs> Yay. He should get a t-shirt saying, I tipped this e-beggar $100 and all I got was this stupid sound box. And we get the whale bail yet again. The whale bail. I think this thing might be dying. But anyway. I forgot who made this term, but it's a beautiful term. It's an amazing term. $100. Amazing. Let's go ahead. Which hat is I the like game I'm playing best? So with that. Number one, we've qualified for the Gunner Glass. We qualified. Just like DSP's gonna qualify for a credit someday. Three letter word. Not today, but someday. I'm gonna get very upset with you. I do the hat poll, and then we have a few more. These games. glasses just make him look like he's about to go uh, shoot at some targets. Gotham. I've worn the fisherman's hat. I've, I... Here's a bunch of more tips that came in. A dollar fifty tip. Let's rake it in. An anonymous tip says Sonic reviews have always been really weird. <laughs> uh, now I want to see Medica respond to this segment, and it's going to be much funnier. Some perspective. Not a single 3D Sonic game has ever gotten... Yeah, we don't care about fucking Sorry, Sonic. Kind of DSP's opinion on so Sonic. ...of waiting it out, essentially. You know, my credit score is going to be bad for a long time. Oh, we're talking about credit. Let's see. Waiting it out, essentially. We're waiting it out, just like ever, always. That's what we do with DSP. We wait it out. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay? It's a slow process. It really is. It's an incredibly slow process of waiting it out, essentially. You know, my credit score is going to be bad for a long time. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, I can't even look to do the things that I would like to do for another year or two at the earliest. And that's if I'm lucky if someone gives me a chance. Because usually when you have bankruptcy on your credit report, that's – it's it's – damning for a long time a lot of people won't want to touch you you know with a 10-foot pole for like seven to ten years since you declared the bankruptcy some places are more lenient you know it depends oh especially but if it's you as of now especially you, know, you. people don't want to touch him with a 10-foot pole on on several degrees including with the interview shit but with that it's gonna happen eventually it's gonna happen one day it's gonna happen you do anything major credit wise like like i told you guys i would hopefully eventually be able and to yeah it's not gonna be moist critical that's never gonna happen because the dude can see right through the bullshit will never happen to either refinance my mortgage or do something with the equity in this home to help me get out of the financial problems i'm in you know if i could use some of that uh, equity in the house to help me with my financial problems, that would be amazing. That would put me back to a situation where I don't have to worry about, oh no, I can't pay the bills this week if I don't make a lot of money on my streams and shit like that, you know? I don't like being in that position at all, in any way. I don't like how, you know, it's shitty. But that's, you know, my reality. Nothing I can really do about that. That's his reality, dude. It's nothing that's I can do. Reality. And I was pressing buttons. I gotta hope for the best. I, you know, we'll see what happens. You he know. was pressing buttons. They kept sending him credit cards. He kept maxing him out. Nothing I could do. No, I'm positive about the future. But he moved across the country on credit cards. So that's kind of what happens. There's no guarantees, right? Okay. 
Indy the Panda did a super chat saying, I'm a rich fan and he's not trying to make money off of you. He's not. Then what about the entire segment? And by the way, the only reason I know about this segment is because when I saw the Mr. Mitoker response, Mitoker. I watched it, immediately YouTube flooded my feed with a bunch of negative videos about me. Because that's what YouTube does. It's just fucking stupid. You watch one video and immediately you get monstrously bombarded with negative shit. Okay? So... I watched the Metacur response. Metacur. Now he's a Metacur. A giant <laughs> segment video of Rich insulting me on his show the other day. Right. Completely misrepresenting something that happened on my podcast. Like day. what? Okay. Like what? Give so, us a segment. Just so you guys, just to give you some perspective. Oh, we're getting a perspective. That these they are, and Rich in particular. So the other day, Snowcrawl asked. Me Dude, and you know this is gonna keep going. And this was uh, the catalyst for this was Snow Carl. So I guess again he gets his money's worth with his shitty one dollar tips. And again, Rich is gonna go on his show again, talk about this very segment happening right now. He's gonna post a bunch of shit on Twitter. He's gonna make fun of this guy. He's gonna again get his views and get his shit and and make his fun. And then DSP is gonna respond to this somehow again because it gets to him so much be a genuinely honest question. and we're gonna never it's never gonna stop and he says well actually what happened was someone i now i'm remembering even better i don't think it was snow carl in particular someone had tipped me like under a dollar all right and i very matter of factly and tried to as logically as possible explain to all of you why i can't just shout out micro transactions like micro transactions <laughs> if you tip less than a dollar it's a micro transaction and i can't shout it out why and the reason is because years ago, when I started being a full-time streamer in 2017... Microtransactions. Do ...anything they wanted, and I said I would shout it all out. Okay. Then one day of me doing that, we had people coming on this stream doing 5 cent and 10 cent cheers and saying dumb shit, insulting shit, just spamming the feed constantly. So the pop-ups would keep coming up. So that you know what I'm saying? That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to disrupt the stream. So at that time... I publicly spoke with my audience. We had a public conversation. We had a public conversation, even though this is a parasocial relationship that I have all the power in. But we publicly had a discussion that was very equal and very fair, even though I have all the power. And if you say something that I don't like, I can just silence you immediately. Honestly, but we had a very public discussion. It was a forum. About it, and we came to the People raised their hands and they got the, the time of day that they deserve. Obviously. Consensus that one dollar was exactly what it should be for getting a shout out on my streams. That anything lower than a dollar is likely someone just trying to troll. It's not like, oh, I desperately want to contribute to Phil, but I can't give a dollar. You know what I'm I saying? Desperately want to contribute. People are desperate to contribute to a streamer. That's that, that's how they feel. I'm desperate. I'm horny for Phil contributions. Came to that consensus over. Just like uh, this reminds me of of Only Ice Coffee when he did the interview with Proper, and he said, "Man, I really wanted to send him that laptop. I really wanted to buy a laptop for him." It's like, what? You're horny for this fat ass fucking disgusting dude? You're horny for him. You want to send him a laptop real bad. I think the quote was real bad. I wanted to send it to him real bad. For five. It's like imagine being that guy. Years. You get like a, a an itch. You get the money itch, dude. I I need it, man. I need to send him to him. I want that attention. I want to revel in the attention. I'll go together on the streams. He's it's gonna give me a shout out, and then he's gonna for, forget I exist. Makes sense. We don't want the streams to be derailed by constant pop-ups of trolls trying to do one cent, five cent, ten cent transactions. It's dumb. So that was the purpose. When someone tipped. A lower amount the other day. I wanted to let everyone know. I wanted to reiterate. This is the policy. This is why we do it. You know, that's it. Thanks. Thanks. Any contributions are appreciated, but I can't just shout out tiny contributions. We'll be here all day. We'll never even get the gameplay. It'll just be me shouting this out constantly. Okay. Does okay. That sound like a logical explanation. Right. It makes sense. That's what we agreed five and a half years ago together. And really, it hasn't been reassessed since then. What we have done is we've looked at the different tier levels. Right where you can get a pop-up or, or a shout-out or whatever. Like, the, you know, now we've got it. four twenty five dollars ten twenty You know, we have these different tier levels for rewards. But makes sense, right? Okay. So how does Rich report it? DSP only wants $100 tips. I'm serious. That's what his fucking thumbnail said. What? 
DSP only Okay, this this gets a fact check treatment. We need to look that up. If Rich was intentionally misrepresenting it or he didn't get the point or something else. I don't know. Let's uh, look up Review Tech USA, the American tech review man who happens to not review very much tech. Uh, let's see what he does and let's just look up DSP because that's much easier. Oh, and that's the first thing that comes up. Damn, that's very fun. Apology, demanding an apology. This two months ago, this one day ago, this is a uh, duty video. Review Tech, uh, why Phil won't do an interview. Where the fuck is this though? RTU streams. Oh, let's see, let's see. The Rich and Red podcast. It's very interesting. Thumbnails. Okay, this is old. Um, seems like it's an old inactive channel. Let's check the other stuff going on. Okay, Review Tech style content. Let's see those. RTU streams. So it's not this, it's on the official channel. It's most probably. Okay, G4 TV, Xbox. Where is this even? With the clickbait thumbnail that DSP says. Where is it? Review Tech USA, DSP, right? Some of you guys in chat watched this? Have you seen this? Let's filter it out by making it uh, upload date. Let's check the upload date. And this is unrelated. This is Chill Murray, Duty Streams, Titanius, Fantasia, Griffin Gaming, Harvey Weinstein. Wow, damn, I didn't know this dude was streaming. Um, okay, we get Crowbcat. I can't find it. Can't find it. Can't seem to exist. Hmm. Ah, see, RTU streams. Because all that I saw from it was pretty, pretty not recent. Unless there is a different RTU streams that is recent. But this is it. Recently uploaded is five years ago. And then we got this from one day ago. Oh, is this like some secret streams? DSP announcement. This is two weeks ago. So this is some bullshit, DSP. Where the fuck did you see it? Daryl Brooks is a psychopath. Piers Morgan interview. Piers Morgan interview with, with Kanye. Oh, he streams on Twitch. Then when the fuck did DSP see that? How did he see that? Was he lurking? Was he lurking Rich's page so he can see if he talked about him? Let's see this week, okay? Review Tech USA. I'm going to look it up like that. So I'm not... Like, I'm not that terrible at looking stuff up, and I can't seem to find it. And if Darkseid fucking Phil found it, then that is a little bit suspicious. A little bit suspicious. And he clickbaited the thumbnail. Review Tech USA, DSP refuses to do crowdfunding. Oh, this is it, this is it. But that's not even his fucking video. And the thumbnail isn't what DSP said it was. Listen, rise up. Say? I don't understand this guy ever, man. I don't understand. And this is a different guy. That's not even like Review Tech USA, is it? Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's let's see what this is. You know is that whoever uploaded this clip that they're watching has this really like strange filter on where it's all blurry, like it. So I'm gonna make them larger, and then I'm gonna do something with the video. I don't know, probably put still images in front of it. You'll see what I do when I do it, because you'll see it. I don't know yet. Uh -oh. As people who started Timmy hundred dollar, I can't shout those out. So the title of the video is just give you content. I just can't. If you me... Well, you know what happened, right? He got booted from Streamlabs. Stream moments. He got booted recently. He got booted from Streamlabs too about a year ago because you know Phil. The trolls either got to him recently. They violated TOS. I don't know Streamlabs or. The respect, no point intended. What's gonna happen with Phil? Oh, it's his editor, all right. Honey about donations, like, oh, I can't shout out Tiny Nots. Like, someone's, if someone's gonna give you $100 and $1 tips, just go with it, just roll with it. I mean, your whole point of your stream, we know it's not about the gameplay, Phil, it's about you sustaining yourself. As a businessman, quote unquote, you should be aware of that, and you should be accepting of every donation that comes your way, because you need your fan support. They don't owe you anything, Phil, you have to understand that, and you should appreciate what you get, but you expect it, for whatever reason. Um, people used to do this when I first started streaming, uh, Phil keeps saying that it's like, what's the big deal with the stream to wear, man? I don't get it. Like, you're getting a donation. Be happy, Phil. I started doing like 10 cent, 25 cent. Come on, Phil. I mean, you can know, you know, if people are just doing like donations where they're just spamming to annoy you, you can ignore that. But if they're like contributing small tips, yes, shout it out, Phil. Um, I didn't know you could do that. Over on Twitch, 
I, say, I can say that now because I'm not Twitch. Well, yeah, because the thing on Twitch is that they have bits. So, like, the small bits, they're going to be, like, they're cheap. It is what it is, Phil. Anymore, by the way. We'll just show it. 10 bit, 25 bit. No, it was effective. Guys, I need a, I need a, I need a Carlos. Please help me and support my Here, family. Do that. And literally, I wouldn't be able to play the game. It would just be like, here's a tiny well, one. Oh, yeah, that's why they do it. It's not a big deal if you're not. The, th the playing the game, Phil. The playing the game is not really the big deal in the grand scheme of things, Phil. You play games every day. And I'm not just talking about the ones you play on screen. I'm still, I'm, I am confused by this, because is it a guy commenting over, like, reacting to a Review Tech USA stream? Is it the guy in the corner, down, down on the right, actually, giving the commentary? Or it's a completely different person? I'm very confused right now. Tiny one, here's a tiny one, here's a tiny one, here's a tiny one, here's a tiny one. Then you had Streamlabs, dude, so why would you need to do that? It was a method of trolling. Yeah, couldn't you just filter it in Streamlabs? All right. Now I'm not saying that everyone. Now he has complete control of it. Like he can play it whenever he feels like. One <clears throat> who's tipping <clears throat> is trying to troll. But when I'm getting tips that are lower than a dollar, I can't really shout them out. All right, I can't. They add up, Phil. Just take the L and move on, Phil. Just take the L. Super chat lower than a dollar either. You know, so it's the same thing. Has to be at least. A oh, that's he has dollars in the background, so they're like shadow dollars are flickering. It's straining my eyes. I'll tell you that. A dollar. All right. Now in this case, it looks like I actually got someone. Who Adam, thank you for the five, by the way. Smaller, What's the movie? Let us know in the chat. Uh, tips. What's wrong with having three smaller tips, Phil? I don't get it. But moving forward, I have to be strict. I cannot be shouting out anything. I have to be strict. I have to implement my own rules. Okay. Why not? Anything lower than a dollar. Okay. I mean, usually you wouldn't have that problem, Phil. Like, usually it'd be like 99 cents, so. But whatever. I imagine a world like this where DSP would get literally any amount of tips and it would just pop up on the screen and there would be TTS. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. He wants $100 tips because Phil only wants big cops. Okay, okay, let's uh, let's do the due diligence to check this out. Since I found, found a video myself, I'm not going to sit through the whole thing, but let's look at uh, the, the transcript and see if I could find $100, right? To see if they actually <laughs> said... Okay. Dude if they actually said that he wants $100 tips, because I don't, I don't get where this logic would come from. Right, uh, let's say 100, okay? Uh, okay, let's see here. I don't get why you're complaining about donations. Like, oh, I can't shout out tiny amounts. Like, someone's, if someone's gonna give you $100 and $1 tips, just go with it, just roll with it. I mean, your whole point of your stream, we know it's not about the gameplay, though, it's about you sustaining yourself. Is this what he is addressing here? That people might give him? But then DSP is missing the point of somebody else missing the point. And this is the only time they've said 100 in that whole video. So DSP is addressing a point that the dude made two minutes, three minutes into this video that is not even that point that he is addressing. So he is misrepresenting what he claims to be misrepresenting. And let's see the thumbnail, right? His other point was that the thumbnail said it. The thumbnail said it. And the thumbnail didn't say it. Because I saw a thumbnail and it didn't say it. Uh, oh yeah, I did minimum tip 100. Okay, yeah, this is not correct. Uh, I get this is a clickbait thumbnail. It's a clickable thumbnail. But it's not correct, obviously. And DSP is going to grip this and go for it. Let's see his point. Dollars, ten, twenty. You know, we have these different tier levels for rewards, but makes sense, right? Okay. So how does Rich report it? DSP only wants one hundred dollar tips. I'm serious. That's what his fucking thumbnail said. DSP only wants one hundred dollar tips. This Rich didn't say this though. It was the other dude who has much worse commentary than Rich has. Because. Phil only wants big contributions. He's not appreciative of small contributions that come in. He refuses to shout out small contributions on his stream. He refuses. Um, you know, he's he's basically a greedy scumbag. He is a greedy That's scumbag. What said. Whoa. What the fuck? When did that even come into play? When did that, when was that uh, uh, anything that we talked about? Right? This was a situation that we agreed on five and a half years ago. We agreed on this, you guys, but the audience then was like completely different. They don't even remember they agreed on this shit. They don't even remember this this even happened. But I get it, of course, DSP is trolled constantly and people would send him like 20 cents. If there was a pop-up in TTS, shut up DSP. If there was a pop-up in TTS, people would send him like 20 cents just so they can say some dumb shit. 
that's going to get him in trouble or something like that. And then from that pop-up and from that donation, he would get like what? He would get 10 cents from it. So obviously he's not going to take it. Obviously, that's not a video that you want to make and talking about, oh, DSP doesn't want to take 30 cent tips. Yeah, nobody wants to take that shit. And then PayPal gets the their cut and then you get a, what, what do you get? A pop-up for that. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works on anyone's stream. All right. Then I'm not just constantly, oh, here's a 10 cent contribution. Shout out. Another one. Shout yeah, out. Shout out. Let's play a game. Yeah, that's no, nobody thinks you would ever do that. You know? So, again, this is the kind of people that they are is they misrepresent me. They make shit up. There was never a situation where I said, I refuse to, re to do any kind of a shout I out. I refuse. Not, you know, oh, that's being ungrateful. No, it's called operating a stream putting out entertaining content that keeps moving and has progress and isn't completely derailed by people intentionally trying to derail it. You know what I'm saying? That would also be like saying Phil forces sub only mode on his streams because he's trying to artificially inflate the subscribers on his channel. No, absolutely not. The reason we have sub only mode on the stream is because if I didn't have it, you'd have constant bot accounts coming in here spamming troll shit. We had that for about one month when I became a full-time streamer here on YouTube last year. The streams were atrociously bad with people coming in and trolling like crazy. We collectively agreed sub-only mode was the way to fix it. And people have said, wow, is your chat so be much better? Did you have control over it now, right? We could actually have meaningful conversations and not just trolls constantly spamming hateful shit. But you could spin it and say, oh, it's because I'm trying to inflate my subs. That's essentially what Rich does, all right? He's a shit stirrer. He's doing. He's a shit stirrer. Indy the Panda. How can you say to me in a super chat, I'm a rich fan, he's not trying to make money out of you, when he literally does entire segments on his fucking show okay. that completely misrepresent me and the things I say on purpose for have drama to talk about for personal gain. But that was just the other dude that talking, though. That's, 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 that's all that I saw. And what DSP is talking about, the, those points that were made in the video, was some other dude that I didn't even know who he was. Who was saying that DSP should take like 30 cent worth of tips and he should give them shout outs as if that would ever happen. Did not benefit him? What? Are you out of your mind? Of course it did. It gave him content. He thinks that's content. You know, he's that dumb. He actually thinks, and again, anyone who's in an audience. But this is content now because DSP is salty as fuck about this. So this is content. Big ups. And that, why would you entertain that? If you are actively in Rich's audience and you know that he's frequently manufacturing drama for you, why would you continue to watch? Unless you're dumb or gullible, right? You should demand better from the people who you watch and follow. You shouldn't have those people fabricate shit so that you can get a, a drama segment on a show. Like, fuck that guy, man. You know, why would you want to watch his shit ever again? He's literally wasting your time. He made shit up to try to have something to talk about because it was a slow day for him and he had no effort into finding real news or anything. He just wants to fucking slander people because it's easy, you know? Those are the kind of people you got to cut out of your life. Really. You don't need those kind of people in your life. There's enough drama going on in all of our real lives. There's enough <laughs> shit going on. You don't need to have many. What drama is going on in your real life? What? You got no credit because you fucked yourself over and your, uh, your dishwasher broke and your car broke and your PC is breaking and your TV broke. Wow, so much fucking drama. And he got so much content out of it. He spent 20 minutes troubleshooting his PC and rambling about it today. He got so much content out of it. He can monetize his drama to no end. But when somebody else comments on it, they're, they're the devil. And they're fooling gullible people into believing the drama that he talks about, about his own life. Very nice. You know, how is that different from... And yeah, the Jasper vomiting... Jasper had hairballs and he vomited all over the house and he spent half an hour talking about it. Really? Stop. We don't make content out of drama. Even things that are not drama, we make content out of. Fantastic. Completely fabricating and, 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 and spinning a situation with a, 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 a YouTube, a Minecraft YouTuber. He knew the Minecraft YouTuber was not guilty of pedophilia. He had the evidence for months. He withheld the evidence. Until he Dude, this is exactly what he says people do about him. And then he's bringing shit up from the past, from like 10 years ago, that I've apologized so much about. 
right? This is exactly the same shit that people do about him. That he pulls on fucking Keemstar and fucking Review Tech USA. Because he knows one thing about him. And he's going to run with it until the end of time. Doesn't matter what it is. So we could be talking about his fucking Project 7 and his jerking off until the end of time. It's exactly the same shit that, that he complains that they do. And he does. Wow, what a great segment. He said he was innocent on the show. After and he talked about this shit already three or four times. He mentioned this story exactly. Pulling this out for two months of content, right? It's exactly the same thing. Talk, uh, talk. How long did DSP pull out uh, his uh, his dishwasher breaking out for content and his car breaking down? And he was trying to trap trolls. He was trying to put trolls in a trap for content, right? To get the upper hand on them. You fell into my hands, is what the Gaudi man said. In a way, that's completely half truths to slander someone so that you can have a segment for your show. Sorry, I'm never going to do that. To slander I'm someone. I'm never going to do that. That's fucked up. No, Indy the Panda, he's misrepresenting what I said. He did not, word for word, go through the conversation. Because if he did, then you would say, oh, here. Bro, it wasn't even him talking about it. It was some other dude. Is was some other dude. The, uh... <clears throat> I wish I could find the actual clip of Review Tech USA talking about it, but it was some other dude. Here is the situation phil says this and here's why because in 2017 he was streaming and his streams were destroyed by small contributions so he came to a collective agreement with his audience he said none of that it's not an accurate representation he spins it the way he wants <laughs> oh just, this is so good it's fucked up okay it's fucked up okay anyway the crunchiest onion did a super chat he said, if there's a mass... Yeah, I think, I really think he saw the thumbnail. He watched the first, like, 30 seconds, and he was like, oh, my God, it's fucking idiot. This to Twitter, to... A Even though that video was... Uh, I don't I don't know what the point of that video was. That shit was nonsense. From Twitter to a viable alternative. It was like, obviously, nobody would do that. Taking, like, what, 30 cent tips and giving them a, a shout-out, reading the messages, derailing yourself constantly. Come on. If you're getting trolled all the time, obviously, it's not going to happen. Would you follow or would you stick it out with Twitter until it gets to be too much? Um, right now, I'm going to stay with Twitter, but I don't know long term what's going to happen. We'll see. You know, you got to see what happens with these trends and things. And yeah, it seems like being bought out could be, the, you know, a really bad thing for the company um, in the long term. You know, what are you going to do? Is burping going to be bad for Burnell Productions Pretty long term? Good. We'll see what happens. Probably I'm not. Against using something else. Twitter. Him's radar giving Sonic Frontiers the two. You know. Oh, and he's gone. That's cool. That'll be good for variety purposes. Where are you going? Has won the poll. Oh, to get the hat. Really stupid. Oh no. Handles again. I guess YouTube finally wised up and realized there's so much rampant impersonation. They have to do something about it. So. <clears throat> okay. Uh. Thank you, Crunchy Sonia, for that super chat. My peripherals seem to be working now. It made me start late. Looks like everything's working now, right? My Everything is working. working out. Okay, perfect. Happy ending. He got his hundred bucks. He got the the happy Thanksgiving jump scare on you. I think a very on your board. All right, everything good. Get everything up and running, and that's the pre-stream podcast for today. Uh, it's all in quotation marks. The pre-stream and the podcast, even though it's called level one, but nobody cares. Fuck that shit. And yeah, he got. Wow, he got $100 tip and $4 more. So that's massive support from literally like two people. So big ups, uh, the guy, for the catribution. So let's listen to the vest song, and I'm going to go, because it's been like a long time. This, this fucking pre-stream is goddamn long. How long was this shit? Two hours and what? Two hours? Of one hour and like 45 minutes? Terrible, terrible shit. Okay, let's... uh. Let's head on to, what was it? Uh, yeah. All right. That's going to be it. Enjoy. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by, chilling, interacting, all that shit. And see you maybe tomorrow for another one of these suffering-style segments. Big ups.
This vest is a symbol of that positivity. It's a symbol that together we can have fun as long as we stay positive and we can overcome anything together. I firmly believe at this point in my life, all right, that no matter what comes my way, that we can work together to overcome it, all right? But that being said, it's time for something new. Which vest is best? Which vest is eBayer best? Okay, vest is best. Vest. Yeah, yeah, young cat. Got that 150 on my chest. Bitches all around me, and they let me touch their breast. Got that saggy man boobs flowing, but that member's count keeps growing. So I got to put it on a vest. Vest. Vest is best. 150. Okay. 150 for the best. Okay. 150, and I put it on my chest. Okay. The vest goal has been pretty hard to hit recently. And that's tough when, you know, things are tight. I get, I get it. Things have been tight for a lot of people, you know. Another thing I don't want people to freak out about is the members. The members right now are super low. Yes, I'm feeling fucking blessed. Begging for hats and glasses and a vest. Coping and coping that the pay pigs will impress. Everybody's begging me. Stop spending on a WWE. Which vest, okay, is best. Which vest is eBay best. 150 vest. 150 vest. Which vest for the best is best? Which one fifty and I put it on my chest? Okay. Vest is best. Vest is best. Okay. Vest is best. One fifty vest is best. Vest is best. Vest is best. Best is best. Big ups, everybody. See you around.